Hello, welcome to episode 203 of See You Next Wednesday, a weekly pop culture and film podcast where a single die roll decides what movies we have to see. This episode drops on February 10th, 2016. That's a Wednesday, and my name is Dan Gorman. There's no insincerity in these potatoes. There's no deceit in the cauliflower. <laughs> my name is Casey Lyons. What's going on on this side? <laughs> Cletus. <laughs> My name is Greg Legro, and that was um, jazz of some kind. Um, I don't have the jacket here in front of me. I'm, I'm just filling in. <laughs> we have tons of stuff to talk. I don't know if you're going to keep going. I don't know. We have I tons of stuff it. to yeah. talk about this week. But first, if you'd like to email us, please email us at info at modernsuperior.com. Please rate and review us on iTunes. It helps a lot. Go to modernsuperior.com and listen to all of our shows that are, aren't See You Next Wednesday. But you can also comment on all the threads there and tell all your friends about us in real life. Mm -hmm. uh, this week on Film Roulette, later, two of us got to see Hail Caesar. And one of us had to go see The Choice. We will uh, roll for movies next week. We'll talk about our Punishment album by Casey Veggies, including uh, a reveal of our next Punishment album and more. But before we do any of that, uh -huh. it's time to get into the itty titty. No. Oh. No. <laughs> I haven't said itty bitty <laughs> get tidbit. Into it. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. I haven't said that in a while. Yeah. yeah. But I realized that now that we have the video, we're going to have a little uh, title and I need to start announcing right. it. Yeah. So we're going to do that. Yeah. Uh, we will talk about things that we saw in the news this week, what we've been watching, and more. <laughs> in the itty bitty titty bit committee. Yes. Right. Itty titty bit. Itty no. Get into, the, <laughs> get into that titty. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was disturbing. Uh, <laughs> I guess big news in terms of movies this week uh, surrounding sports. There were a lot of trailers revealed at the Super Bowl. Yeah. Oh Did yeah, you guys, I watched a couple of them. I watched the Super Bowl. Okay, and saw none of them. Really? Did yeah. you watch it on oh, Canadian television? Because I watched it in Canada. Ugh. Yeah, I started Don't using this uh, illegal website to stream the uh, Super Bowl, and I was yeah. getting the American feed, and I was so excited. Excited. About it. and it's then... always best <laughs> now that we've got your voice and your image going out on the <laughs> internet to let everyone know exactly what illegal things yeah, yeah. you're doing. Yeah, you don't know me. <laughs> Uh, but then my uh, Wi-Fi was being a dickhole because I live in a place that's with built with horrible concrete, and there's parts of my apartment that don't uh, accept Wi-Fi now and again. So then I lost it, and I had to just watch ah. it on TV like a fucking Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and uh, I didn't see any of the damn uh, trailers, trailers, the uh, the movie spots. Yeah, that were, I saw. Well, I saw the Avengers one or the uh, Captain America, yeah, Civil War one freeze. <laughs> and I was like, I bet the rest of that is great. It just, it just, <laughs> it just froze. froze. Yeah, my it was a fucking. It, it, it was streaming, and then it was thinking, and it was on a Captain it America. It streamed all the way to Canada. Then it got really cold. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the freeze <laughs> froze. froze up, <laughs> and I didn't know what it was a boot. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wa I I didn't watch that one until yeah. this afternoon. I don't know why I didn't. Uh, jump to it uh, well is it i didn't so I, I didn't catch up on anything either because it looks fine my life is a mess yeah i can't i can't watch trailers anymore yeah i haven't seen anything i don't know what's going on my phone's broken yeah and uh, i missed out on all the trailers <laughs> is it any good is i be excited uh tell me a story it's fine it's a like a, a 45 second spot that right. shows you some stuff it's the does guys it, go ahead does it show you spider-man no no uh, <laughs> they're luke skywalker in him for yeah. sure yeah. um <clears throat> No, I did watch the 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 TV teaser for Ten Cloverfield Lane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I saw that too. Which I'm still super excited about. As effective it, as that original teaser, it shows you more. Oh, yeah, but still without revealing but specifics. Right. So you see like a house, uh, it like the lights, like something lights up behind a house. So you see the light shine through the windows and stuff. But we don't know if that's like a military thing or is it a monster or okay. like but it is because a pretty the cool image for this thing is not all monsters are monsters <laughs> or something like that <laughs> implying <laughs> that john goodman is some kind of a monster yeah yeah because he's the one keeping them in this underground right yeah or well, maybe it's metallica <laughs> <laughs> some kind not of, every monster some kind is of some monster. kind of monster <laughs> Yeah, it the they're they're uh, they're trapped under there because they stole Metallica albums from Napster. Oh, you can't <laughs> you cannot do that. Uh, what is this a Metallica fucking did a cease and desist on a 
like a London, Can, Ontario, or yeah. a Guelph fucking yeah. tribute yeah, band. London. Well, come on, man. <laughs> the, uh, Lars Ulrich has since said he wants their was, beer tickets. Right? Yeah. Is that it? <laughs> the, the, what? He wants their beer tickets for playing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fucking. <laughs> yeah. You owe us eight thousand beers. <laughs> But uh, night preferably. <laughs> um, no, he has since said that it was an overzealous attorney. Not, and, not me. And they, yeah, and that they love it that uh, other people are playing their music. And I'm like, I don't know, you seem like the kind of assholes uh, yeah. that would do this. Yeah. <laughs> and then when you're called on it, go, oh, it was some other guy's fault. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Fuck, man. That's, that's my best Metallica impression. It's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I I, all about the whole run. <laughs> I also I watched the Independence Day thing. They showed some more of that. Yeah. All, I, I feel I like can't get into it. All the trailers were just like, here's a little bit more. None right. of them were really like so well done that got you more excited. Sure, sure. Yeah, it was just here's a couple more shots. Did uh, Did you guys watch the Super Bowl? Did I did not. Yeah. No, it was uh, about five thirty on Sunday when I was like, oh, Super Bowl's probably today. <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah, and then I went right back to uh, not caring. Oh, just a bunch of cool, th- you know, Peyton Manning, fun things. Yeah, you know, uh, I saw what? Eli Manning. Huh? Yeah, I saw Did Eli you? Manning's reaction. Yeah, that was weird, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why? What happened? Well, the Broncos scored a touchdown, was seemingly cementing yeah a Super Bowl victory. And everyone's excited. Yeah, and Eli is just like, Ugh. it's like it cuts <laughs> to their box where like yeah. the family's like the all Manning like high fiving each other. And Eli, and Eli goes like. Ugh. Ugh. Like he does not care. No, that's no. sort of his default anyway. Isn't I guess it? so. But it yeah. looks like he cares less now that they scored than before. Yeah. How I know. Many yeah, Super yeah. Bowls does he have? He has two. He's, He's got won two. two. He beat Tom it's Brady twice. It's like he rolls twice. his eyes at the yeah, fact yeah. that they scored. Now, but so now, <laughs> but how many Peyton, does Peyton, Peyton Manning already has will, at least one? This right? will now be two for Peyton. Oh, okay. So but he's also lost that. twice. You know, so yeah. you know Peyton's got that kind of like they couldn't pull it off in the big games. All the time, yeah. But uh, it's exciting. He gets a, if he if he retires, he goes out on a win as a uh, he's first quarterback to ever win a Super Bowl with two different teams. But he also yeah. closes out with the Denver Broncos, who had John Elway, who ended his storied and troubled career uh, with, with a the Super Broncos. Bowl victory. Yeah, in 1998, I think he finished. It was like the first year that Peyton Manning came in the league. All kinds of fun things are going on. But th- what was really exciting was the Lady Gaga uh, national anthem. Oh, yeah. I heard that was really good. you see all the stuff and the no, things and the pictures of her? No. Did you see in the image? She looks like, okay, imagine uh, designing women had like a villain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she's dressed like. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Everybody shut up for 20 minutes. I'm, I'm just going to be picturing that. Have you not seen what she looked like? No. Oh, well, probably. I have, no, I, have, I have no interest in the Super Bowl. I no, certainly no, no. have no interest in Lady Gaga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. have a fine picture of her because it's uh, fascinating. Yeah. Uh, she's saying it fine. Uh, you know, whatever you need to do. Oh, she had a real, I'm going to get you Dixie Carter. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. I can't. My phone's Fuck being you, a... Fuck you, I'll get it up. You got it? Uh, you get it. I'll get it up. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. All right, Craig. He made a penis <laughs> reference. <laughs> is it this? Is it the red? It's uh, red. Okay. Yeah. Is that? Yeah, right? What's with her hair? I don't know. I'm telling you, designing women supervillain. <laughs> she, yeah, she looks like the, the power... <laughs> suit version of a lot of girls I went to high school with. Yeah. Um. And She's so that an idiot. so that was bizarre, and it was his own thing. It's fine. Then the game's pre- pretty boring. I Super really Bowl. liked her thing at the last Oscars. I thought that was what her speech. No, her song at the oh oh the Oscars. Right. Yeah. yeah. Last her Golden Globe Oscars. speech was weird. Yeah. yeah. Her song last year I fucking was, thought was amazing. Yeah. The the yeah that was so uh, good. I don't know what she did. And it was that, like a tribute uh, to Sound of Music. Right. Uh, the halftime so show at the that Super Bowl. Like a whole, whole bunch more things. I yeah, I about. loved it. This was the most. I'm a big football fan, but this was the most out of touch I've been with any football season. What with uh, Athena being pregnant, and it just like wasn't. Just didn't. I wasn't really paying attention. I yeah. didn't really care. Um, and my Bears are terrible this year. Um, so uh, I didn't even know who the halftime performer was. I'm like, oh, oh excited. I heard about that too. The halftime show. Sometimes that's great. Or at least interesting in some yeah. kind of way. And then it's cold plays out there. And I'm yeah. like, how did they sneak onto the field? This irrelevant band now. Because, I mean, the whole the well, cold play thing. they got a album out this year or some I, shit. So what? <laughs> I, you know, I think Robert Plant put out some albums, too. They're not calling him <laughs> up. You know. Um, but uh, it cold play, it's over, right? I feel like it's over. No one cares. <laughs> and then Chris Martin's out there wearing, like, 
I don't know, some tearaways and some kind of, I don't know, track pants or something and sneakers. And he's I don't like where this running is Running around to like he's trying to sell Coldplay songs. Yeah. He's like, I'm beating fun. Yeah. Oh, really? Which they aren't at all. It was all yellow. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like they had to cover up how horrible the choice was to have Coldplay as a musical guest because then they brought out uh, Bruno Mars from, hey, remember from two Super Bowls ago? Yeah. And Beyonce from like a, like a one or two Super Bowls ago, something like that. And they came out and they were great because they're really entertaining. Their songs yeah. are relevant and uh, of the day or whatever. <laughs> and then fate, they, yeah. they kind of like usher Chris Martin into them at the end and he kind of runs down the catwalk with them like, hey, me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite thing I saw too tweet that was that had a picture of them all three performing and and they said the best thing about the super bowl was when um bruno mars when they brought their uber driver out on stage with him <laughs> <laughs> with them in reference to, to chris martin that was so funny yeah yeah I, uh, yeah it's a strange time i don't know why uh, that was the musical guest because yeah. uh, they've gotten it's not like they can't get large they've had J- paul mccartney they've yeah had michael jackson they've, they've had, had fucking prince Prince, who yeah, you know, I think people totally care. Guy I feel like wouldn't. there's people yeah. that care about Coldplay still. I feel like their album sold well. I th- the new one, yeah. I feel yeah. like people. I don't think it got good reviews overall, but I think when it came out, people were like, "New Cold." Like I just every time they put a new album, I'm like, "People still like Coldplay." I don't okay. listen. I don't think they're like the worst or no, something. No. But I, I don't. I haven't. Listened I just to it. yeah. I, I haven't uh, purchased an album. Yeah. Uh, no, I bought the first one. Uh, I I still maintain their first two albums are pretty good. Is the second one good? That's uh, the one Rush with like scientists and all yeah. that. Yeah, it's got it's it's spotty. There's a lot of it that's forgettable. Mm, sure, but there are some genuinely. Is that got like clocks and stuff on yeah. there? Mm. Yeah, <laughs> got clocks on it and stuff. I got some clocks. <laughs> yeah, there's some there's some some nice melodies and stuff like that. Okay. Before they started getting really like uh, well, yeah, uh, really yeah. dad rocky, and, you know, whatever they are. I feel and like I did, they were. Yeah, and I didn't realize like modern day air supply. Yeah. basically. And he's only like 38. I thought he was so much older. <laughs> Chris Martin. Uh, Really? Yeah. He's well, that's got a weird because he's been making coupling under his belt. <laughs> he's been making the music of a 38-year-old for 20 <laughs> years. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, no. I don't know. I tried to care about the the uh, the Super Bowl ads yeah. this year. I well, watched again a couple. in Canada. I didn't see any of them. I was just like, it's Joe. We, look what funny person we got to be mildly amusing in our brand ad again. It sounds uh. like you're referencing something specific. <laughs> no, like every ad. Like oh, all the who, ones, like that, who, who all the did ones they? that I saw were like we got were shock top, but we got TJ Miller, and then there was another one for like Bud Light, and we had all these comedians, and it's just it's like, like Ryan Reynolds playing yeah. like eleven parts in one commercial, yeah, or, or like, like Christopher Walken and some, I don't know. There was like a few like when we first started the podcast, we talked about the ads, yeah, which yeah. ones we yeah, liked. Like, and that stuff. was the first episode, and I think. but yeah. yeah, even more so this year than any. I was just like, okay, yeah, yeah. you got someone that I wouldn't have. Would, thought would appear in an ad to be in your ad this year. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what, what is TJ Miller doing? In... Well, because he's in Deadpool. So yeah, gotta, yeah. Was yeah. there a Deadpool spot? Or... No, it was for Shock Top, uh-huh. the beer. I don't, yeah. I don't know what that is. So the beer with the little orange uh, oh, mascot guy. guy. Yeah. Um, he's I don't a, know what he, anything yeah. is anymore. <laughs> it just was him <laughs> arguing with a mascot. Yeah. They were just throwing in so insults each at each other Do like people, a Judd Apatow movie. Like you look like an orange with a mohawk. Oh, I, you look like you're a dumb guy that fell over. And it's just like <laughs> they just went like that for okay, a while. Okay, sorry. First of all, sweet bird. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you look like a dumb guy that just fell over. <laughs> you burnt. <laughs> I might use that on someone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Yeah. yeah. Um. I do do Pete like is T J Miller a household name soon? Nah, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I mean, he so, started you know, Silicon yeah. Valley. He's definitely put him. He was somewhere. in that we can't stop this train, but then we stopped the movie Unstoppable. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that's putting him anywhere. I've seen that movie and I I forgot he was in it. Yeah, yeah. But he was pretty. He was in that prominent. Transformers. Yeah, yeah. He was in the Transformers movie. Yep. Like he he he's in things, but apparently he's I not he's, in Deadpool all that much. Sure. I think he's like poised to break. Galifianakis style yeah like he's all of a sudden in everything and then now it's soon in like the next year he'll be like the guy for yeah. that stuff I feel cool. like yeah. I, I love TJ Miller I think oh, he's yeah. super no, hilarious he's awesome yeah uh, did you guys see the green band trailer for uh, green room Mm-mm. Uh, well I saw I saw it ahead of um, 50 shades of yes. black right 
Did we talk about that last week or no? I think we did. Okay. Mm. Did we? I, think I don't. We did. I don't know. Yeah, anyway, don't that know. looks amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Really <laughs> and doesn't spoil all the stuff. If you haven't seen the trailer for Green Room, go check it out. Uh, it's a phenomenal movie, and I cannot wait to see it. Yeah. 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 Was there any other news that you guys? I can't think. I don't of know. I didn't wise. see any news. No. <laughs> okay. Oh, I did see uh, for Greg, a resident preacher. Uh, uh, knowledge uh, oh, yeah. haver. Right, Jackie right. Earl Haley uh, cast as meaty villain Odin Quincannon. What do you think of that? Uh, yeah, good. That's pretty okay. good. And he's great. Yeah. I, he if, is great. If he's cast pretty much as anybody in the preacher world, to be like, ah, oh, he'll figure it out. Yeah. Ah, like, oh, yeah. Uh, I thought man, he would have been really good as a different character, but fuck yeah. it, whatever. That's good. Because he was real. He was actually really good as. Freddy Krueger. It's just that he was. that movie was garbage. Yeah. I don't know. Was he though? Yeah, I, I think he, I think it was a good pick, and I think he did his best, and he put in a good. performance. Yeah, what do you roll into and do there? You know, yeah. like how do yeah. you jump into that? And he. But that's the thing. Like I feel like he was just trying to stay out of Robert Englund's way. Yeah. To no great effect at all. Well, it I was... love Jack Earl or Jerk Earl. <laughs> Jer- <laughs> uh, I'd like to go on record as as being a fan of Jerk Earl but uh, but yeah. <laughs> Maybe it was just that that whole movie was so flat and uh, yeah. I thought he garbage. was the only thing that worked in it. I, I would agree because with that, they yeah. they sell it really serious. They're making him scary. He's not jokey, and yeah, yeah. he's giving it his all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the movie was just like, oh, we'll fuck up all the set pieces with with poor effects choices and yeah, yeah, and unnecessary made this movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Did you did did I hear something about them talking about making another one with Robert Englund? I don't know. Uh, no, I it? have no idea. I don't know. Maybe yeah. I'm just talking out of my ass. Probably. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I've done it before. Look, checks out. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Did mm-hmm. you guys watch anything this week then? I watched all kinds of things. Yeah, yeah me too. Yeah. Cool. Well, what? Uh, well, first of all, I uh, I watched the final episode of Mad, Mad Men. Men. Oh, oh you, you watched the entire thing. Yeah. So you've passed where I was. I've, I've watched seen the everything last... now. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm so... My life has no meaning anymore. Oh. <laughs> that that it, it's I, I miss it so much. I miss it like I miss uh, uh, Breaking Bad. Sure, <laughs> I don't <laughs> miss that at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and and the ending is perfect. Mm-hmm. It's fucking. It's funny. It, it, they they sort of end the last half of this uh, of the last season is a little soap opera y or or like they're definitely wrapping up this season where it's like sure. everything is changing and this person went and did this and this person went and did this. Like all of these big things are happening kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, it's a show where a lot of big things happen. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Why should the ending be any different? And uh yeah, wow, fucking perfect ending. Fucking A. Uh yeah. I wish yeah. I could fucking explain why it's perfect. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> don't. Everybody yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah. I keep getting this email <clears throat> from Netflix is like, hey, we've got season seven, part two, and then yeah. I go on Netflix and it's not there. I'm like, why? <laughs> you take all the route, you know, the uh, the genre, the uh, 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 what do you call it there? I don't know the what categories? you're trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the categories? Uh, the no, the uh, uh, the region. Oh yeah, jumping yeah. that we oh, can. Oh yeah. Uh, again, we were just enjoying doing and paying for our Netflix like good people. Now I'm stuck with gain Netflix. Yeah. Can't watch nothing. And they're sending me emails that are lies. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I it, it was the craziest thing. Now I'm going to have to go steal that show. Yeah, from the internet instead of. And this is not Netflix's <laughs> instead fault of necessarily. illegally working around to get that show <laughs> because <laughs> right. unblock us is still illegal. <laughs> no, listen, but it was like a it was like a war of a gray area. I guess it's illegal because just Canada's. Uh, uh, Canada's laws are fucking dumb as shit. Yeah. Canada's entertainment laws leave us but with things uh, like Shit's Creek. But it is entertainment <laughs> law everywhere that caused the regions. Yeah. yeah, it's not just Canada that was like you need an uh you need to pay for well, us. Well, we get <laughs> no, but but we get some Mad Men. I know. Yeah, <laughs> like it's not like we can't watch that fucking show. You know, it's like enjoy this world, but not Canada. Yeah. Uh, right. it, yeah. So like you like you lost your region thing. Uh, a couple weeks ago, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we didn't like we had our like right. uh, ours was fine for the longest time. We were watching it in bed um, on my PlayStation Three, and uh, and we went to the next episode, mm-hmm. and it fucking it crapped out, and it was like no more regions for you, and I was like fuck you. So then we went out out uh, to the living room, and on our Apple TV in the living room, it was working just fine. Mm-hmm. I don't know what they're doing. 
I don't know. But between the regions like between my bedroom yeah, and my living room. Pretty good. Completely separate. I feel like you're promoting PlayStation <laughs> 3s and Apple TVs there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trademark. <laughs> well, uh, Greg, what have you been watching? Um, I saw some stuff. Uh, I had a nice list in my phone. And then your phone. And then my phone won't get working. charged anymore. Long time listeners will remember. Maybe you I should had get a horrible, an Apple phone. Maybe I should. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do not like Apple products. <laughs> no. Um, my phone wouldn't take a charge like a year ago or something like that, and I had a horrible day trying to fix it. Anyway, so my phone's all fucked up again, and my list is gone. So uh, I did see a, a couple of things, though, this week. Um, I guess I'll start with uh, I rewatched Unbreakable. Oh, oh, I haven't really? seen that in a long time. Uh, yeah. I haven't seen that since the theater. Oh, wow. Uh, Athena uh, didn't wanted to watch it, so I was like, yeah, fuck, I'll watch Unbreakable again. I haven't seen that in a while. Unbreakable. Yeah. Maybe five um, And it's really uh, it's such a weird thing to watch because where, where, when that movie came out to where we are now yeah. with M. Night, mm-hmm. um, and it's still a terrific movie. It's a really but unbreakable. Is it? Is. Unbreakable, yeah. But you can see, can you see? Like, no, I okay. don't. I, I see it and I see all this potential of filmmaking. Yeah. And there's all this patience with stuff. There's these wonderful shots and all this intention that's very uh, sincere and honest. Yeah. Like, he picked it. He, you know, he he got a huge hit out of a a genre movie, and then yeah. he could do pretty much anything he wanted to do, and he made a, a comic book movie, but his way, and a really smart take on a comic book movie yeah, with great performances and a really fucking cool story, and the script is really good, and there's these wonderful emotional peaks to it. It has these really nice, tight, not contrived moments, and I'm like, what the fuck <laughs> happened? How did this all go down into yeah. such shit? So anyway... Which has led to Athena and I are now going to, because she's like, I've only seen his good movies. Yeah, so she's, you're going to go all the way. We're going to just, we're like, <laughs> all right, we just watched, watched Unbreakable. So uh, now Signs, then, yeah. then a vi- the village. Like Signs is like, man, what an entertaining movie. That's yeah, just like, there's some really entertaining definitely. shit. Like, so much of it. Oh, I remember boy, leaving like, the theater and, and being mostly in, like happy. Yeah. Like, I was definitely like, oh, well, this and that. No, but I overall, I was movie. like, what a good time. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I like that movie. I've yeah, seen it definitely. A, a few times. Um. It's like eighty yeah, percent. Yeah, nailed go. it yeah. again. You had very good performances. But some it nice is twenty percent really stupid. Really <laughs> stupid. Really, really. St- <laughs> Why? But it's like yeah. at that point because that's only his third movie. You're like, okay, yeah. You're yeah. Like, you tried really hard. And you, that was you went fun for enough. here. You know, yeah, you're like uh, putting it as far out as you could. So, but then the village is next. Oh, <laughs> Jesus! So what she's not seen that. So there's this weird bumpy ride into yeah, madden- just into madness. Yeah, did, you, did you see After Earth? Huh? Oh yeah, because yeah. okay, I because yeah. I, I saw it in theaters for the show. Did yeah. you end up Me watching too. it? Yeah, oh, no, okay. I, I, I saw it in theater for oh, the show. Oh, we was pick it? it a, we, I think we might have picked it. As it was a winner. A win- yeah, you guys. <laughs> we <laughs> was it on a winner? We I stupid. think I think I saw About Time or whatever instead. Yeah, it was a weird uh, pick. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, it, I think it right was that. Well, really weird because well, that was the a fucking great movie. Yeah, yeah. It was one of those situations where the biggest thing coming out this week was like something yeah. we feel like, well, we should check in. Is he back yeah, to we good or know. is it yeah. bad? And then and, that was just like <clears throat> something we haven't heard of and it's right. a romantic movie. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And it turns out that, that movie's phenomenal. Yeah, it was fucking a time travel <laughs> time, time travel love story which yeah. never works out well. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> Except for a great that movie. Time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're going to plow through Okay, yeah. so she's never seen any I mean, of those. You're going to watch The Lady in the Water? Uh, maybe. It's that, oh, no. She's I've seen never that. seen that. She it's, has seen that. I kind of want to. Shit. Yeah, it's pretty it's stupid. It's a fucking great cast. Yeah. yeah terrific. Um, we might. And we'll Shyamalan's see. Shyamalan's in there. We could, yeah. <laughs> That's what I meant by great cast. He plays the writer He of just the started story. building his own roles up in each movie more yeah. and more. It's like, listen, so he just plays God and acting. In Signs, he plays the uh, um, director and writer of the movie who tells everyone how to kill the aliens. Yeah. Yeah. I just oh, I want to slap his stupid little face. Oh yeah, he, although he, he the, could be so. And I don't know. You guys said the visit was great. You're wrong, but you guys. Oh, but, I thought it was totally hell. enjoyable. That was a, totally enjoyable. That was a that was a bounce back. I think so. Um, maybe he's or coming back, be. or maybe he's just self aware, or now. just accidentally like, entertaining. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. But maybe he's like, oh well, maybe I make shitty movies now. Maybe and he's just embracing. Well, that. the happening was so funny. Th- it's so. I, I, I can, that's what that I cannot so wait funny. for. I cannot wait for the with happening. our little M Night in order run yeah. when we get to the happening because it just be. It's so funny. It's so funny. Yeah, yeah. it's fucking hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it, it's weird uh, because you've got. Mark Wahlberg and Zoe Deschanel, and they both kind of talk like this. Yeah, and, and, and like Wizamo's in there. 
The thing about that movie is, I feel like if it had been pitched differently, because there, I, I vividly remember there was like press kit material out on YouTube and stuff of him talking about like, oh, we screened the movie and these people came out and they were stunned by how scared they were. Uh, uh, oh, I can't believe how scary that movie was. And I feel like in that movie there is like a fun intentionally funny B movie throwback because it is like a he did he said that he has afterwards. claimed that he has yeah, claimed after that now, the fact. but at the time he was not claiming that no, no. but I feel like it came out and everybody was yeah. like this thing is dumb if he, if yeah, he had yeah. claimed he that was like, at the time oh, I know if he yeah. had claimed that at the time I feel like I could have watched it and be like this is fun fuck like, yeah maybe because the first time I saw it I'm like I hate this movie it's terrible uh, because the trailer was really good and really intense the trailer was really sold it yeah absolutely then you watch this movie and like. Mark Wahlberg shows up, supposed to be a <laughs> science teacher, and he's just he's just like a Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. And just, I don't know, this wind is like all like yeah. do or something. And an old lady's <laughs> like, some old this lady's like, why am I in yeah. my lemon drink? Yeah. <laughs> and, and But I feel like that's maybe he made the visit thinking that. Like, he made the visit thinking, I, tr- mm. I made this movie and pretended and, and thought it was serious and people thought it was funny, so now I'm going to make this movie that, like, is kind of goofy and funny on purpose. Right. And, for that reason, is entertaining and fun. I feel like maybe that's what he was trying to yeah, rebound. Maybe. I don't know, but, but I liked the visit. I, I, I'm really, <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing the happening again because I kind of want to see how you know rewatchable and watch yeah. it with somebody who's expecting who's never, a bad movie yeah. Yeah. And just to kind of have fun with it. Yeah, because you never know. Sometimes you get like a bad movie that's got great life and legs. You know. Yeah, I think it, I honestly, the last time I watched that movie, I had so much fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. It's not a um, wasn't Arsenic and Old Lace? Didn't that start as a not a comedy? Isn't that a thing? I don't know. Not a, I don't know. Somebody tell me. Yeah. Um, not, not that the happening is going to become that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe it should be a stage show. <laughs> I'd love to see a stage play about the wind being yeah. evil. I would buy, I would buy tickets <laughs> to evil wind. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah, the big... Uh, song the big show ending theme song is it's finally happening <laughs> <laughs> and the person that is in the middle of the stage puts their arms up and like uh, leaves fall on them <laughs> oh, I, I don't know I think we, maybe we should uh, make an entry in the next year's Fringe Festival yeah <laughs> it, oh that's oh, a good yeah. idea happening the musical that is yeah. actually okay. legitimately a great idea yeah right. <laughs> because <laughs> everybody would go and see that yeah, yeah yeah alright sold let's Holy do shit. this <laughs> <laughs> like bare bones like experimental yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> theater making <laughs> I 100 percent think that's a good idea. Okay, um, we'll we'll have a character who plays the wind. Yeah. <laughs> like we'll have an actual yes, actor yeah. who suit just goes around With going some tights and <laughs> yeah, some clouds on yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's old. All right, let us know if we and should it, uh, write a play. Yeah, we will yeah. hand. We and will if you want to play the tiger at the zoo. Yeah, uh, right in. We will hand <laughs> out a tiger or a lion. Anyway, the guy yeah. who's looking for his arm. We'll give mm-hmm. out lemon drink to everybody that shows up. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> uh, I did a little double feature this week of De Palma. Oh, um, Ooh. Mm. and I started with something that I came upon on Netflix that I had never seen that I always wanted to see, yeah. which was his uh, follow-up to the carry, more uh, more telepathic teens with the Fury. The f- yeah, have you guys ever seen that? Uh, no, I've no. Never seen it. Um, Who's in that? Is anybody John Cassavetes? Um, hmm. I keep wanting to say um, Kirk Cameron, yeah. But I when I was <laughs> when I when the name came up on the screen, I had mixed it up uh, with with somebody else. So I'm gonna put it into IMDb here for a second. Yeah, sure. Alan Thick. No, <laughs> um, Tracy Kirk Bolt. Douglas. And I had said <laughs> Kirk Cameron when it when it came up on screen. I was like, he's in this. Thinking That's, it's an easy mistake. <laughs> I was like, make. he's in this. And then at, in the opening of, this, of the movie, I thought the teenage kid. I was like, that doesn't look anything like Kirk Cameron. <laughs> but it was Kirk Douglas. Yeah. Um, but it, uh, Kirk Sorry, Cug- he's not yeah. recognizable. Yeah, Kirk Douglas. Much of a career. <laughs> he's no. not a very he's famous. He's some actor. nobody. Some nobody Kirk Douglas. <laughs> John Cassavetes, never heard of him. Probably couldn't even direct a movie if he tried. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this was like his, like it was the movie that came out in 78. So um, it was another um, t- uh, like psychic abilities thriller. Um <laughs> You it's guys are opening up beers, Sorry, that. <laughs> it and it's exploding everywhere. <laughs> yeah, and I'd always wanted to see the Fury, and never got around to it. And so I thought I would check it out. Um, 
It is definitely... Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, my leg is very wet and Casey's cold. opened a beer and it blew up. Uh, go to <laughs> youtube.com slash modern superior to see that later. Because <laughs> it went all over his leg. <laughs> it's very cold. <laughs> it's refreshing. Yeah. <laughs> well, better at your leg than the floor. Absolutely. Yeah, no, thanks, man. <laughs> you saved oh, no it. Pro- no problem. I... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was worried for it everyone at it. home is like I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> my leg is very wet. Yeah, but none of it got anywhere but, but your my leg, leg the which couch, is fine. The floor or anything is great. Yeah. Um. So yeah, the fury, the fury is like uh, I don't know what the creation of this because he didn't write it or anything, but I don't know like why he decided to do another movie about teenagers that can control things and have psychic abilities, but he decided Lazy, to. I guess. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I guess it was just in, like... Um, but basically, it's about um, Kirk Douglas, whose son has psychic abilities, and he's going to send him off to this, like, psychic ability school. It's very, like, X-Men-esque. <laughs> yeah, right. um, and then the dad uh, gets shot in front of the kid, and he thinks, oh, my God, my dad's dead, and he gets sent away, and the dad basically is hunting down to find his kid but then at the same time like a teenage girl has um an experience with like telekinesis and the movie opens amazingly and you think this movie's gonna be so fucking crazy and i love De palma at his in most craziness yeah and he's doing all that here with the split focus and shit yeah and it's so good but it just it drags in the middle but when it picks back up at the end it is it becomes amazing again so i mean this movie's two hours yeah but i will i will say watch it if you want to see an amazing full body explosion uh, <laughs> <laughs> like if you want to see not, I did not expect you to say if that. you want to see somebody <laughs> scanner style yeah all right. blow up yeah full body do. just I everything really, I really, really ev- do. in full view amazing shot explode it is so good um, I've watched scanners when I didn't want to watch scanners just yeah. because I'm like, well, and, and I feel like this has <laughs> this movie has less of of boring stuff than scanners. Yeah, but I just feel like it's a very inconsequential movie because there was a yeah. point at the end of the movie when Kirk uh, Kirk Douglas and the teenage girl with like superpowers show up at the climax, and I'm like, everything that happened in the last 45 minutes could have just been removed. And they could have just run up to the climax. It's like it's just, it just would have been fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of wheel spinning in the middle, but there's a couple really good telekinesis kills in Brian De Palma. Yeah. He's doing his crazy thing that I love. Okay. Um, and then so I decided I haven't seen Snake Eyes in a while. Oh. So I watched Snake Eyes, another De Palma said movie. No one ever. Um, <laughs> haven't seen Snake Eyes. In said a while. me. Better I watch ha- Snake Eyes. I hadn't seen it since <laughs> it came out. Right. And. It was on Netflix, and I was like looking for a thriller. Greg and I know sure, this sure. very yeah, well, yeah, yeah. and I was All like, right. I need something like this. Sold, good, yeah, no, I got you. A good Paramount. Is that thriller. on Netflix right it's now? On Netflix, I might watch. Part and of you it. know what? I really enjoyed it. Really, it yeah? is so much fun. That opening shots up something. until th- like the Snake Eyes is known for it doesn't have a good ending, but I feel like that not having a good ending is so right at the end. It's a movie where, <laughs> like, instead of, like, oh, the ending ruins the whole movie, it's just, like, this movie's building up to something, and then they just have everybody show up in one spot, and they're like, ah, anyway. But I was like, the rest of the movie's still really fun and yeah. really crazy and really yeah. entertaining. That opening shot, the big uh, single take, yeah, was great. And there's a really amazing overhead shot, and it's De Palma just doing all this shit. That yeah. I, but, but it is true. Apparently, they removed an entire like there was a the whole movie was supposed to culminate with a huge wave because the whole thing's in taking like if there's a hurricane and a whole wave was supposed to come and like engulf the like casino and then they just cut that out <laughs> so like oh. at the end of the movie they just all like show up to a spot and they're like hey, it was him and get him boys and then the rest of them and then and then at the end of the movie he's like i almost drowned it's like the octopus and goonies it's right. like i almost yeah. drowned i was crazy and you're like what <laughs> <laughs> But I think, like, it in terms of watchability, that fucking movie is fun as hell. All right. I had a great time watching it. Okay. Yeah, and Gary Sinise is great in it. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. Nick Cage doing his un- unhinged, but, like, still yeah. good <laughs> right. uh, thing. Yeah, I thought super fun. Perfect uh, for, for that Netflix kind of viewing. Yeah. 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 Well, shit. What else? Uh, well, I watched something. Yeah, what did you see? I watched uh, Trumbo. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Man, I keep on hearing that it's like really great performances and not a very good movie. Uh, and I'm hoping that's not the case. Those people uh-huh. did not steer you wrong. Uh. That's exactly what it is. Ah. It's, a, it's a bunch of, well, it's a really great performance. Right. 
and then some other people who are right. also in the movie. And uh, it's a J. Roach movie, and it's very much a J. Roach Ooh. movie. Oh. It, it really feels like somebody who who would be a lot more comfortable directing another Austin Powers movie right. or another uh, Ben Stiller and his yeah. parents movie. Uh <laughs> But he really tried for a prestige. Jay Roach picture. is really trying to to not be Jay Roach because I feel like then he do he's the, not succeeding. Didn't he do that like like family drama that had like a, the big cast in it that you had to see? Like this is where I leave oh, you right. or whatever. Is that him? Uh, no, he, I don't. He think did that was something him. like that. Uh, I'm not sure what it was, but okay. I don't think that was him. Um, I feel like he did something that was like a comedy but drama, and it uh, was him trying to kind of he d- uh, game change. No, maybe that was it. Yeah, no, I don't know. Um, but anyway, he did the campaign. Yeah, yeah, campaign's he did. pretty funny. I'm campaign? Sure. I didn't yeah. like that movie. I had, I laughed a lot. Anyway. But anyway, he is <laughs> he's just that utilitarian middle of the road comedy. Yeah, director. yeah, yeah. Right. And he was trying for his uh, prestige picture, and it's uh, it's shabby. Yeah, it's just it, it's it's not well thought out. It feels like a TV movie. Uh, I love Louis C.K. and I love the things that he does. I haven't seen Horace and Pete yet. I heard that's great. I hear it's fucking excellent. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I love it when he does stuff like that. I love it when he does very Louis C.K. centric things that come from his own mind. But when he's acting in a movie where he's another character, yeah. it's just Louis C.K. <laughs> the, yeah, the, uh, d- delivering. <laughs> uh, and I don't know why. And I like I'll I'll give him chances until the uh, the fucking day I die because he is one of the most talented human beings ever. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, he's just Louis C.K. in this yeah. movie. Uh, Brian Cranston is fucking phenomenal. Right. He's just not given enough to do. I don't think he necessarily should have been nominated for it. Oh, really? He should have been nominated for what he was trying to do uh, within a really limited movie, but the movie was so limited that it also limited his performance okay. right. uh, to the point where I don't think that, that, that he should have been nominated in a better mm. movie uh, handled by a better director. He could have excelled in a way that would have been fucking mind blowing. Yeah. But huh. he wasn't given that choice, that chance. And That's okay. a bummer, man. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. I still want to see it. Oh, yeah, and yeah. Michael Stolberg plays um, Edward G. Robinson and he is fucking great. Uh, well, that guy's a, Terrific actor. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Well, shit, man. Yeah. yeah. I'll still watch it. I'm very curious. Totally. Yeah. And you know what? I, I wouldn't... I, I'm not going to say it's it's boring, necessarily. Uh, it's it's entertaining enough, but then so is Goldmember or uh, <laughs> Meet the Parents. You sure. Know? Yeah, yeah. They're, they're watching. Not, yeah, yeah there's, they're certainly watchable. Right. They're just not good movies. No. Did he do all of the... Uh, uh, Austin Powers movies. I he I think he did the first two. I don't know about Goldmember. Yeah. Sorry know. if I was out of line with that. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> uh, anything else uh, on the watch list? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What, Greg. Yeah, I watched <coughs> uh, the end of the tour. Oh, oh I shit! To see that's that. the um, the David Foster Wallace. Yeah, movie? that's right. I heard that yeah. was great. Yeah, it's uh, yeah Jesse Eisenberg and Jason Segel. Um, and it's uh, David, uh, what's his name? I don't have Gordon it. Green. No, no, no. Yeah, <laughs> uh, David. Uh, mm, he's a writer, Rolling Stone. Can't think of his name at all. Uh, Again, my phone died, so I don't have any yeah. notes. Um, so, Rolling Stone writer, young writer, goes out to interview David Foster Wallace for Rolling Stone just after Infinite Jest is on its big book tour and blowing up all over the place. Mm-hmm. And it's he recorded the whole thing on David set. Lipsky. Lipsky, thank you. Um, <clears throat> and uh, the interview actually was never printed, as far as I understand, or put into a story for whatever reasons. Um, and so this is basically because David Foster Wallace uh, uh, killed himself, and so this movie is after the fact of that. So it is about it being aware that this has happened, and so it's Lipsky yeah. going back and looking at his interview with him and listening to it. Um, and so you basically just get. Uh, the two of them in cars and hotel rooms talking Mm -hmm. for about two hours and uh, without a doubt one of the best movies I saw all year. Yeah. Holy shit did I love this movie. Um, It's uh, it's because it's not uh, it's not about oh this wonderfully talented writer who was emotionally conflicted and had these issues and whatever and wound up killing himself. It is really just about 
looking at a conversation he had with another one a writer who desperately wanted to be where he was eventually yeah. and their conversation is two fairly smart but fairly difficult human beings emotionally and uh intellectually having a very very good conversation and it tells you quite a bit about them and about any kind of narrative that you would want for any kind of movie to to come away with something to think about uh either these people or yourself or the world at large yeah it's fucking fantastic so fantastic the performances are great um this is exactly where jesse eisenberg belongs i think he works well in these movies he kills it he's really believable and uh dialed in it's not like watching something like what was that stoner movie i watched american ultra yeah, yeah you know right. it's like he's fine what i it just doesn't work and like he was great in the social network and he it, it, you know when he finds his niche roles he really really yeah. kills them and this is a, that situation and jason siegel is just pure heart and soul yeah. in this movie he's so good so so good and it's such a strange thing when because i've never wa- i never was into how i met your mother didn't watch that show Me either would attempt to get into it every once in a while i'm like i hate this i can't do it yeah uh but it was new jason siegel yeah. from movies and i'm like this guy is fucking hilarious and so i was like i like neil patrick harris i like him a lot jason siegel why can't i watch this show because i think jason siegel sucks on that show <laughs> I, it's just like he seems like he's just not just into yeah it. yeah yeah and hannigan too like it's not all yeah. of it. i'm like i don't like i just don't like that show yeah. I don't like the writing. Yeah. I don't like I was carried. It off. was one of those shows where a, everybody said like you got to be watching it, and I was like, "But I watched it. Why would no, I? I watched be. enough of it to to make a, a solid decision that it's. Uh, I see what everybody gets. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's, it's not, not as yeah. bad as like Big Bang. Theory no, or no, something you know. No, it ha- it definitely has its own <clears> thing. <throat> it's like Malcolm in the Middle for me. It's like I get why people like this. Yeah, Malcolm I will never like it. In the middle no. of the road, more like it. Uh, <laughs> thank you for your social commentary. Oh, very good. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's the same thing. But anyway, it's uh, neither here nor there. That show's finally gone and whatever. And but I mean, that was that's why most people, I guess, would know Jason Siegel. Yeah. But he's just got this creative life outside of that where that, that has been so. How so I met your mother successful. in the middle of the road, more like it. <laughs> <laughs> when you look at Forgetting Sarah Marshall, yeah. which is a rom com essentially, but yeah, it's one of the best comedies. Very, of yes, so yeah. good. Fifteen years, boy, is that yeah. a good movie? So funny, so rewatchable. And then uh, that movie, then because of the climax in that film he gets to do a muppet movie yeah he reignites which the is muppets. fucking great it and is he, great he gets to do that because he loves puppets yeah right? like <laughs> he's such a pretty good interesting man. performer really really cool there's an excellent interview with him on uh, uh marin on wtf that's really really kind of cool it gets into all that stuff and this movie quite a bit too but um it doesn't see it doesn't seem like an exciting movie you know you just got two guys talking about shit in a car or a hotel room or a restaurant for um, almost two hours, and fuck yeah, again, one of the Sounds best like things I saw all year. My dinner with Andre. Yeah, 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 but not at all. <laughs> <laughs> but that same kind of, I don't know. Uh, these guys, uh, two very, very talented guys, doing uh, what they do about as well as they can. Yeah, yeah. in a really well written, really interesting, thoughtful, touching movie. Mm-hmm. Directed by James Ponsold. Mm-hmm. He's having a good career. Mm-hmm. Um, super quick. Speaking of wonderful funny touching uh humorous just amazing movie i watched the movie for the first time this week um have you guys seen the original heartbreak kid no with charles groden directed by elaine may no. uh they re the fairly oh, wait, brothers with remade ben stiller it. The, the they remade that's it. a remake that's a remake. yeah i had no idea yes that that movie's fucking terrible yeah that's a really yeah. bad movie uh fairly brothers fa- uh the heartbreak kid um, with Charles Grodin, directed by Elaine May, is absolutely brilliant. Uh, one of the best movies I've watched in quite a while. Really? Absolutely. It is so, so, so good. And it is so... Because the... Ah, so it, I couldn't even describe how good it was after I watched it. It is so I loved it. It's basically Charles Grodin gets married um, at the beginning of the movie to who he thinks is like the right one, and yeah. then he goes on a trip and he like um, ends up kind of falling in love with this woman when they're in uh, Miami at Miami Beach, and it's basically a comedy of errors of sorts. Like it's kind of a screwball comedy, just about like his wife is there and he's trying to like kind of you know get with this new woman and and it's and on it's his honeymoon on his honeymoon it's kind of like a screwball thing but the the at the center of this movie 
is like the like fragility of this like sad man's ego and like how you know hmm. the 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 unattainable is only ever uh desirable when it's unattainable right. and 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 the final shot of this movie is like a f- like a up there with the graduate for me it's really? so good like the the like bleak dark satirical core of this movie is so so good and it's directed so brilliantly by Elaine May and it's written by Neil Simon oh, it's shit. just it's just wonderful and it's so fucking funny like he is just Charles Grodin is just in his fucking prime yeah, and he's the best the so, best oh my god so with um, a movie like that if you're gonna remake a movie like that, yeah, why would you not get the Farrelly brothers <laughs> directing uh, <laughs> Carlos Mencia? <laughs> um, I just want to get the name of um, the actress. It's Elaine May's daughter, um, Elaine Boozler. No. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Ryan May, Sybil <laughs> Sybil Shepherd is is like the woman that he's after. Charles Grodin um, and. Uh, Janie Berlin, who plays the wife, and like she gets sunburnt on the first day and is like bedridden, and she's putting cream all over her, and she's like basically the like fall guy of the comedy. She's like the right after they get married, they go out uh, on this road trip, and the first thing that they do is they go to a diner, and she's eating like an egg salad with extra egg salad, and it's getting all over her face, <laughs> and she's just like hundred percent committed to being like. It's like the it's eggs. like the Elaine from Seinfeld. She's just committed to this. Like I'm putting this all over my face, <laughs> and and she is fucking brilliant in this movie. And and the two of them together, so funny. And yeah, just I, I, I you can't spoil it, but like the end of this yeah, movie, where, because it no. sounds like something I really want. Yeah, to like you do. Play, you, if, if you like tonight. modern <laughs> romance, Albert Brooks. If That's you like, exactly what yeah. it's, it sounds. It, it sounds like the the if Albert like Brooks movie, kind of which is like. On its face value, this is a really funny movie about a guy, and he's like, his wife's in, like, he's coming up with new excuses on where he's going today because his wife's stuck in the hotel room, and it's like funny on a base level, just like it's so screwball. But at the same time, the what's going on at the center of this movie is so like, um, the the like American dream of right. like having a wife, and like the, he wants this thing on the side, and like the futility of like grass is greener, and all this stuff is just so fucking funny, so brilliant, so so good. Yeah, so like cutting. Awesome. Yeah, I'm yeah. dying to see this, man. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, it sounds man. great. Yeah, great. definitely if you haven't seen The Heartbreak Kid, it's mm. one of those, fuck, man, Charles Grodin. I was looking through his like uh, filmography, and I just love him. Yeah. Like, so I good. love him in The Lonely Guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a great so movie. So good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it'll scratch your itch for that if you really like. I it definitely see, feels like a double feature with modern romance, and you'll be laughing all night, and then also like, <laughs> so oh sad. fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna try and check that out tonight, maybe. Yeah, yeah. very good. Nice. Anything else? Yeah, I I, uh, I watched a movie, a little did a little bit of catch up uh, from last year, very critically acclaimed movie that both of you saw mm-hmm. and really enjoyed. I watched the movie Tangerine. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, what would you think of that? I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> what is the big fucking deal with this movie? I love that movie. <laughs> what is the big deal? It's cheap. It squanders any good uh, uh any goodwill it creates. There's a moment in it that fucking broke my heart. There's things about it that to love. I get that. Yeah. yeah. There are things about it that in a uh responsibly uh handled movie uh would have been really nice. Yeah. Uh there's a moment um is it spoiling? I don't know if it's spoiling something. You know when she uh, goes to sing in the the nightclub. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I might be spoiling something here for those who haven't seen it. So, uh, Skip but at ahead the same time, at the same time, this movie doesn't have plot points or anything. No. So, whatever. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, spoiler here for uh, Tangerine if you haven't yeah. seen it. Um, there's a point where she's singing in a club. And it's she's been building up to this like she wants everybody. Yeah. The to whole come night out to has see. been come out and see me. At yeah, this club. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's her and like it's, like uh, yeah. flyering for for her show. And it's kind of her dream. Yeah, to it's escape like, L.A. is to be this and, like and to, lounge to escape singer. The the kind of squalor in which she yeah. lives. Uh, and two her two friend. Well, one friend comes out and one not friend. Uh, yeah. That's a whole other thing. Yeah. Uh, and as they're leaving, you just see her slip the door guy 
some money. Yeah. yeah. And it implies, obviously, that she has paid to sing there. To sing there. Right. And it's beautiful and sad. And I'm like, ah, oh, I get it. All of the shrill pointlessness leading up to this point makes sense now because it's it's sad and beautiful. And then not two minutes later, they talk about it. Yeah. And I'm like, why did you squander that fucking moment? That one little moment that just, that was perfect. And everybody saw it. Everybody knew what was happening. Yeah. yeah. It's obvious that that's what's happening. But that's what this movie does time and time again. It just squanders any goodwill it creates to the point where I feel like it's creating that goodwill unintentionally. No. Uh, there's a I big know. blow up scene. Like, I feel like the movie itself didn't even understand how tragic the cab driver and his family were. Uh, oh, and, and, man. and the big, the big moment in uh, the big climax of the movie, which is actually quite exciting and great, mostly because is James Ransone is that his name? Yeah, mm-hmm. is fucking great. Yeah, um, him and the I I don't remember her name. Um, mm-hmm. The one lead, the the yeah. lead who goes to the club. Yeah. I don't remember her name. Uh, the other one, Cindy. I remember Cindy, and I did not, did not care for her performance. At all, I was like, "You, you are just trying to be shrill and clever, and you're not interesting." See, I thought that that was going to be my my reaction to the movie after the opening scene. I was like, "Okay, I'm not sure how I feel about this," but I don't know. I I definitely disagree about the movie accidentally um, finding those moments. I think the whole movie for me was about the balance between those moments, and but I but I like I said I to like you off just mic, didn't... I said. I knew watching this movie that like people are going to see this movie and because of its shrill almost like I mentioned to you it's almost like a 90s like when when people in the yeah. 90s were making movies that were so fast and so talky and look at me and I get that a- as a sort of like reaction to this movie but I just felt like I felt like this movie had way more I, I, so d- I definitely like didn't it, feel like it was doing it accidentally for me I feel like it didn't have I feel like it didn't it didn't recognize the moments that it had Okay. And that was that was really unfortunate for me. Mm-hmm. Like it felt like it came by those things by mistake. And while there were some some inherently great things, like uh, the woman, um, uh, the 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 woman that he was cheating with, mm-hmm. uh, she, she was phenomenal. Like I <laughs> thought she was really great. Yeah. Uh, she didn't have that much to do, but what she did was was really entertaining. <sighs> but. But it didn't quite make it. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I, I would, really I would agree with you. Like, I, I liked Tangerine, but I wasn't blown away by it. No. Um, and you know, I've really been crushing through as much of 2015 as I can to make sure my year-end list makes some kind of sense to me, or something like that, or yeah. I haven't neglected something, or you know, we, we haven't missed something to talk about. And it's just one of those movies. Like, yeah, I absolutely enjoyed that this year, but there were a lot more movies that uh, I was more invested in, or yeah. got a little bit more out of. It just, it just, because uh, uh, it's, 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 it's good, not great. That's what it is. I feel like for me, it just, it didn't. Um, I feel like not enough did. of it landed for me. It didn't. Uh, it didn't quite. I don't know. It just didn't quite grab me as much as I think it was wanting to, or no. many people mm-hmm. it set me up to believe it would. Um, I don't know. I, I really enjoyed the performances for the most part. I, I thought everybody was pretty great. But yeah, the structure of the film and how it works and that 90s sort of thing mm-hmm. sometimes that can be perfect and most of the time though it isn't because yeah. you really leave too much left out there there's too many moments or ideas or conversations left on the table that mm-hmm. you're not really realizing or taking home with the film because it's got this like well we're just taking a slice of life thing it's like yeah. wow yeah you were lazy and didn't write a movie yeah <laughs> you know? yeah and, and it feels like 90 percent. Uh, like this would have been a great short film yeah but, and it, uh, fe- well, it, it just feels like there's there's scenes that really take away from the sweet fragility of of parts yeah. of this movie yeah like I, the long uh uh car wash blowjob oh, was so unnecessary so no, unne- i thought that was brilliant uh, i i thought the staging of that scene was absolutely necessary. It was a dude with an iPhone in the back of a car <laughs> filming a blowjob. But the fact How that much it was porn, do you find uh, <laughs> beautifully shot? No, yeah. I thought that the 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 uh, the fact of that they were in a car wash and the stuff that was going on on the windshield with the car wash <laughs> was like oddly brilliant. Like it was so yeah. like obvious that like the car is going through a car wash and this guy's getting a blowjob. It was that yeah. weird blunt. 
almost like John Waters like sure ob- like bluntness to it i, I like, feel I like, felt I, like could, I, I feel like somebody could make an argument for that scene and convince me i in, uh, in yeah. either direction honestly uh, while i was watching it i'm like like oh, i get it yeah all right <laughs> yeah uh, but i i don't know yeah i guess and, I, I, and saying that the, you know be, you're being lazy and didn't write a movie is i think a little bit more attributed to the 90s films that do this kind mm-hmm. of thing not so much this movie i think this is better than a lot of that but still not yeah. great. and i totally like, guess just, all of that i guess just when I watched it, I was at this at, while I was watching it, thinking a lot of that stuff. I was like, "Well, this is really abrasive and in your face, and I don't know if I don't usually like that." But I just I found the stuff that wasn't like that. Like when I got to the end of the movie, I, f- I felt like it had illuminated parts of the movie that I didn't realize earlier, and I found myself thinking back and being like, that. "Oh, okay, like this movie was doing all of this," and like I just not like it wasn't like you know a twist or whatever, but it, I did feel like. Yeah the sort of sadness the movie ended on, I thought back to the scenes and I thought like, oh, at the time that was just an abrasive, gross, uh, like annoying, shrill scene. And then I'm thinking back, thinking, but there's this sadness underneath it and now I get it. But the thing is, it didn't, there's no through line. Mm -hmm. You know, like, what's the movie about? Basically, it's about uh, someone trying to go and find somebody that cheated on them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Well, it's not about that. Yeah. Uh, But... Well, well it is, it's but... about the friendship between these two people, yeah. but you never see these two people connect. Uh, yeah, there's some scenes at the end. Mm, yeah. Well, okay. And at the beginning. At, at, at the, I don't remember the scenes at the beginning, but at the very end, you know, the, the secret comes out kind of thing, mm-hmm. and, and you see them uh, get, you know, go past that or whatever. Yeah. But I didn't feel like... I didn't feel like at the end of it, I got what it was about. Yeah. I was like, I know everything that happened. But I don't get what this is about. This is yeah. about you guys being, you know, friends despite the hardship of the life that you've chosen or the life that's chosen you, whatever, yeah. like however you, you, you choose to look at it. Mm-hmm. I kind of thought, though, that like it I didn't need that because I felt like their their relationship was almost in a, in a weird sense like. I, I don't want to see them connect because I feel like they're kind of being bumped together by life and they're just all that they have. You know what I mean? Like it's like it, in a perfect world, they may not choose to hang out with each other, but because of their life right now and the and their but their, I don't know where they are. They they find themselves at the donut shop and they find themselves yeah. together all the time and they're just these two people that want but out. I, but but I don't know because Cindy, who uh, you know, shows at the show at the at her, uh, um, her yeah. nightclub show, she she. She's she fucks up and she's not yeah. gonna make it on time. But she just makes it on time or five minutes late, and she's there and she's really pushing, like she's really, yeah. uh, uh, like showing love for her friend kind of yeah. thing. And there's a sweetness to that. This horrible, abrasive, terrible person, uh, you know, has the capacity to genuinely love somebody yeah. and be supportive yeah. to somebody. <clears throat> but I felt like that was one little moment and. It wasn't tied together in the end, and it wasn't. Yeah. Uh, but for me, it's like she doesn't realize how much it means to her yet. She, if if she knew that it like it was so important to the um her she who sang, right? Then maybe she would have you know what I mean, made it there. But but she was so blinded by her own pursuit. No, yeah. but but despite that, despite yeah, like what I'm saying is despite the fact that you know she was blinded by what what she felt she needed to do, yeah. she made it to the show and yeah. she's very supportive, clapping and cheering and yeah. being like super supportive. And I thought that that was really sweet and 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 it was nice to see that this terrible, um, <laughs> self involved human being could ha- could yeah. show compassion for another person or support for another person. Um, and that is reciprocated at the end. I just didn't feel like everything in between that uh, felt like A to B. It mm-hmm. just and, and and it just felt like life's not A to B, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but storytelling is. <laughs> and I feel like this wasn't that. Oh man, talk to the new wave French cinema man. <laughs> uh, get out of my house, you hippie. <laughs> This isn't my house. No, and I um, and I but, totally no, you're get, right to tell him that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I told no, I totally Bryce understand. Was like I definitely understand. And, and yet, at the same time, the the end of the day or the end of this segment, we've talked this long about it. Yeah, yeah. So there's something. There's yeah. something no, there. no. It's it's not without uh, value and worth. Absolutely. And again, it was one of the better things I saw this year. Yeah. But not amongst the best. Mm-hmm. So I said I said at the beginning I didn't get it. I did get it. I just didn't like it. Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> 
Uh, well, listeners, watch Tangerine on Netflix and tell mm. us what you think yeah, uh, us about know. it. Um, you can you can be the uh, judge this time, instead of uh, this time. Casey-less, Oculus, Danless, Gregless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the movie's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else then before we get to film roulette? <laughs> Real fast. Okay. I why uh, you, when your uh, your baby won't let you sleep and yeah. you just can't pay attention, you just got to have something on. Uh, I watched uh, a movie called Pound of Flesh. Okay. Which is where some people steal Jean Claude Van Damme's uh, kidney. What the fuck? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so why don't you watch that? Of course you watch that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's a movie where he's like. I'm, he's like, I'm John Van Dam, and he's like, bang some girl, and he wakes up, and he's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Please tell me that's exactly what I, oh, God, I yeah. had it. I know I had it when I came in. And I was like, are I they trying bomb, to do, my kidney. are they trying to do, like, crank, but with? No, it has no humor to it okay. at all. It is deadly serious, because then it's like, and his brother is there, and his brother's like, oh, uh, we barely know each other. And uh, um, it's please a, tell me his brother is played by Jean Claude Van Damme. I wish if this had been a sequel, <laughs> to Double Impact, then this would have been the best yeah. movie I've ever seen in my entire life. But instead, uh, okay, so Double Impact doesn't make sense because you've got two twin brothers separated at birth. One is raised in America and one in uh, Europe, and they both have the exact same accent. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then this movie is you have two brothers who didn't grow up in the same house. Fine. But one of them has a fucking Belgian-French accent, and the other guy's an American. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, because just, you couldn't find a guy, yeah. or at least pay this man to try to do an accent. <laughs> Even the worst one would have been fine. And so it's like, oh, man, they stole his kidney. And it turns out he was just about to donate that kidney to his brother's uh, daughter. Oh, oh, wow. That is some <laughs> bad luck. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, this movie is horrible. Uh, yeah, you just described it. <laughs> but you're Listen, saying I should It should have been it. fun. That idea is so stupid. Yeah. And out of this world. But the fighting is boring as shit. It has no sense of humor about it. And what is going on? What is fucking going on with aging action stars and not knowing how to comb their hair? What the <laughs> fuck is happening? They lose the home. St- I was, uh, I, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> An action star gets to a certain age and they start losing, losing their, their combs. Yeah, no they combs They can't remember anymore. where they put them. Yeah, their looking, brain's given out from all those kicks to that. Van Damme's wackadoo hair in this yeah. movie. Plus he's down like, a kidney and that yeah. can't help. And Schwarzenegger, <laughs> he's the worst for it. Yeah. I, try, I threw on, I only saw about 10 minutes so I can't really comment on it and I fell asleep but I saw a bit of mag Oh, I was I was wondering if you were going to watch. Yeah, that, I, I'm Netflix. going to. I'm not going to not watch a Schwarzenegger movie. Yeah, and I, in that too, I'm like, why didn't anyone comb his hair? If he <laughs> won't do it, someone so there has to be someone on set who's got to be like, just comb his hair. Yeah, we're in close on his head right here. <laughs> well, that movie was like, it. I feel like that was post, a character choice. Yeah, for him. post well, zombie apocalypse. Zombies love combs. They stole all the combs. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. what they're here for. Combs. Yeah, because the comb is combs. so close to your brain. Ah, it smells like. Your, your brain, brain. Right. yeah. yeah. Uh, listen. <laughs> There's little brain bits on your comb. <laughs> well, it grow uh, the brain. The hair grows out of the brain <laughs> and leaves some bits. It on all it. checks out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, look, uh, I'm not. I'm no biologist or anything, <laughs> yeah. so I'm going to believe you. Yeah. Is that why I started going bald? I have no more brain. Left? <laughs> yeah. That makes it sense. all grew out. The That's why I head. watched Pound of Flesh. Yes. I have no brain. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it all grew out the top of your head. Uh-huh. Yep. Um, yeah, uh, unless you have a screaming baby who won't let you sleep and you just mm-hmm. need to have something on in the background, there's no reason to I watch Pound of Flesh. I do have that. You do, maybe you should watch Pound of Flesh. I might. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, should we then now get into film I roulette? I guess so. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Film roulette is our weekly segment where the three of us roll a die and the two high rollers get to go see something good. This week, the winners got to see the new Coen Brothers film, Hail Caesar, and the loser has to go see something bad. This week, the loser had to see the Nicholas Sparks adaptation, The Choice, but the loser gets to give the winners an album to listen to for the rest of the week. Last week, Casey gave us an album by Casey Veggies, and we will roll for movies next week, and I will reveal uh, a Punishment album. Mm. Uh, This week, Greg and Casey saw Hail Caesar a film about a Hollywood fixer in the 1950s who works to keep the studio stars in line. This is getting 72 on Metacritic and is directed by the Coen brothers, starring Josh Brolin, George Clooney, uh, Scarlett Johansson, uh, Tilda Swinton, Frances McDormand, Channing Tatum, Jonah Hill, 
uh, Allison Pill and others. Fisher Stevens in this thing. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. There's some some surprising people just show up in little things. Yeah, hi- things. highly anticipated. Obviously, anytime the Coens release a, a film, it's a big big deal for us. Yeah, we're, we're fans. Absolutely. Um, so they, they have made some of my absolute favorite. Their last a movie number is of, one of my favorite yeah. movies of all time. Yeah, now. they've made a number of my favorite movies of yeah. all time. So. I'll leave you guys uh, to it. Um, how does it stand up? Let's get into it. Sure. All right. Uh, what, you, what do you want to do here, bud? Well, this is a complicated movie to talk about. It is. Because it's not very good. Yeah. What's it got on Metacritic? 72? 72, yeah. yeah. That's about right. Um, I heard 72, and in my brain I was like... 72, 57. <laughs> All right. Oh, man. It, lo- it, it looks amazing. It has some incredible moments of inspiration and uh, fun and pure enjoyment. Yeah. But it's got some real boring stretches of just like, why is this here? Why didn't we work a little bit more with this? And it doesn't. And this is a movie where I think if you had nailed a little harder down into a central storyline, which I know they don't really like to do. Nor did. Nor do I think that that was the point of this movie. No, but, but it this just movie absolutely one. suffered from that. Yeah. Um, now I liked jumping away to all the vignettes, and I could have watched an entire movie of George Clooney starring in a nineteen fifties. Caesar film. <laughs> uh, I could have watched that all day long. Him, yeah, him, co-starring Clancy, Clancy Brown, Brown him and Clancy <laughs> Brown in a fucking <laughs> Roman period piece with all painted backdrops and stuff like that. I literally could have watched all day long. Anytime it went to that, I was wildly entertained. Yeah, I loved uh, the and the move whatever movie uh, Channing Tatum was filming. I would have watched that too because uh, their love of them being cinephiles and loving film so much those and, things and are handled loving the golden age of film where yes. where it, there were these big lavish um uh, uh water sequences yeah, and, and, yeah, yeah. and and dance sequences yeah. that were overtly oh. homoerotic yeah uh and and gleefully homoerotic totally. and I, I think that 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 scene specifically skirted that line really well yeah where the um the sort of busby berkeley uh, uh aspects of the uh, of the big flowery numbers um were a little less well served in in this movie than they were in something like uh uh the big lebowski right see now that's where that kind of thing where they're they can have a flourish of their love of that kind of film and how and that sort of uh, storytelling and visual aspect really adds to a movie because there's a movie i mean the big lebowski it's like as far as like using as a narrative of perfect storytelling or something is pretty out there because it's mm-hmm. a it's a very big sprawling story that's pretty insane <laughs> yeah. that doesn't tie itself up at all you know but but it has enough of a central character that you ride right along with nothing against what josh brolin does in this movie he's terrific in it but See, i disagree i think he's not the character that you should follow day to day i think that him playing that character the way he is he's doing a great entertaining job but it's not a character that has any form of depth or journey that you can go on. I think that his, I think that Josh Brolin was in a very different Coen Brothers movie than everybody else was. Uh, really? Or rather, maybe everybody else was in. They were all in different Coen Brothers movies. This this movie really felt like it had no through line whatsoever. Um, yeah. Yet and, I wasn't entirely bored at any point. No, I wasn't bored. I was just there were moments where I was like. Where when um, Clooney is kidnapped, yeah, and is it a spoiler to say who he's kidnapped? No, because the story doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Again, much like a Coen Brothers movie, um, he's uh, uh, he's um, kidnapped by uh, communists, right? And basically, they explain to him. Um, uh, how communism works and, right. <laughs> uh, and why he should be a communist. There's there's elements of it that are absolutely charming. And yeah. George Clooney in those moments was fucking great because yeah. basically George Clooney sort of represents every man, I think, and and how easily swayed the common man is. And for him to just be a dumb actor, yeah, like he's just wandering around being an actor. He's like, now I'm an actor. Now I'm uh, in Rome, and he's acting, and he's like, oh, now I'm kidnapped by a communist. Now I'm a communist. <laughs> 
uh, his, yeah, I'll have another finger sandwich. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And his the way he plays that is fucking yeah, wonderful. Really great because he's just a simple man who's like, okay, yeah. And and it's really great uh, the way he plays that. And and weirdly, uh, no, it's 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 pretty great. But it, it also sort of just tells these stories like, well, this is what capitalism is like, and this is what communism does. Yeah, and 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 it's kind of like. Well, yeah, but everybody knows that, and you're not using those things as plot points for an actual narrative. No, no, no. You're just throwing all of those those things together in, in a movie and representing them in different ways and showing how they relate no, to the movie industry. And it's not giving you a thing where you can, like, oh, well, I'm going to pull the metaphor out of this because they're not giving you one. It's not a metaphor. It's direct. <laughs> it's These very... people are directly communists. Yeah. And they're directly against <laughs> the capitalist system of the movie theater, of the, uh, the movie industry. Called and, Capital. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, uh, oh. and the, the press is, is uh, represented by two women who are the exact same person and, yeah and uh but you know with with Miss slightly Presley. different uh um uh self-awareness or whatever sure uh yeah it's just everything like all of the points they're making it's just kind of like well yeah okay but so what yeah there is quite a bit of that uh, i and with the yeah ah uh, um i i could have watched uh ray fines try to direct a terrible actor all day long I loved that sequence. That sequence was great. Really fun. And it had the kind of uh, Cohen's magic and comedy that I think is that uh, of all the things I've been doing with their careers, which has been fantastic. The the comedy has been the lesser represented now in the, in the last little bit. Whereas well, it was, because it's been the used, less the, successful thing. Well, true enough. But still, it, it used to follow a fairly signature pattern from the Cohen's where you'd get... Drama, comedy, drama, comedy. Right. And you just back and forth with that. And now, yeah, sometimes it's the Hudsucker Proxy and people don't get it, which is a fucking bummer. Because that's, yeah. that's a great <laughs> It's a movie. fucking brilliant movie. It's their most uh, underappreciated film Definitely. by far. I goddamn love the Hudsucker Proxy. Yeah. Um, but, you know, films like Raising Arizona is one of the best comedies I've ever seen. Uh, and it, I just watched it again a little while ago. It still holds up with, like a motherfucker. It's so great. It's weird because I usually find that their comedies often are the ones that have even more to them. Like, well, they like lean, the, the, movie, the movies the that... They, is, they yeah. lean more into the Coen's left turn in their yeah. comedies than anything else. They've like, like, like Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Thou and yeah. even, even Inside Lewin Davis, which at times is, you know... It's, I wouldn't call that movie a comedy, but it's also yeah. not like... But it's very funny. It's not, yeah, it's very funny, and it's not like No Country for Old Men, which is not a comedy. You know what I mean? Th that's the thing. Inside it's the movies Lewin that Davis, they do that kind of both is are the movies that I usually find are the ones that have like a deeper thing to pull yeah. from. Yeah, yeah, and and are more relatable. This movie yeah. is not relatable or anything. No, because at the end of the day, I didn't care. No, and if it was going to be a, if if it wasn't detailed enough or focused enough to be a tribute to cinema, and it also um, it also didn't pay enough attention to these things for it to be any kind of satire. Although it skirts, the, it, it presents itself as satire more oh, than anything. Oh yeah, it, it but it isn't slapping you in the face and telling you it's a satire. Yeah, but it but it, it doesn't feel like it. It isn't really. Yeah, it's not invested enough in the uh, the ideas to be a real satire. And there was a lot of stuff in it that I was just like, like, well, first of all, the direction. My biggest problem with this movie is is how lifelessly it's directed. Uh, like it, it feels like they're just trying to get shots of the actors without setting anything up beautifully like they normally do until yeah. they have a and big they got water Deacon's number. back on for this one. Yeah, which he, I I didn't see any of his, of of what I love about him. Oh man, um, Deacon's uh, shot a horror movie that was at Midnight Madness called The Girl in the Photograph that. If you hadn't have told me it wasn't was Deacons, <laughs> I would have like everyone was going around saying like, oh, Deacons return to horror," and I was like. This movie's garbage and it doesn't look that great. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you had told me it was just some whoever that liked Deacons, I would have been like, yeah, it was an okay approximation. Yeah. But, yeah. Fuck, man. I think, I mean, I feel like he's definitely able to go on some autopilot. <laughs> yeah. And I uh, really felt like that here. Like, I felt like this movie wasn't as striking as it could have been. No. Um, listen, but all this being said, I enjoyed myself. I I can't say I did. I, now, I enjoyed myself in the sense that I haven't been out to the movies in a while. 
Yeah. Uh, particularly with my wife, which was great. Athena was telling me before we recorded, she was like, because uh, this was your first sort of foray out into the yeah. world without the baby. Without you the left baby. her uh, on the kitchen floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just left her in the inn center. Yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, in the inn center. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's lots of people there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, a lot of flat surfaces you can put a baby in. I thought, I thought you said incinerator. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, we won't be home to turn on the heat, yeah. so nothing will happen. Yeah. Huh. Um, um, it, yeah. So I was wondering. I was like, so, so she's like, you know, so we actually got, got to go out and see a movie. Yeah. And I was wondering. I was like, I wonder if that's going to affect your uh, uh, your enjoyment of the movie. It did because I was just like, I'm out at the movies, and that's nice. And I'm out with uh, my wife, and that's really nice. Uh, and I was really tired, and it was hard to stay awake. Um, so I. Uh, the thing is with the Coen Brothers movie is when it's the Coens, you want that extra bit more because they're better at it than everybody. Yeah. yeah. So when it's not the best, it's a total bummer. Um, and I got a vibe from the movie early on. I'm like, oh, okay. I got to either, this is somewhere in between. Uh, it's probably not going to be as disappointing as Lady Killer's uh, or going to feel as awkward uh, or un Cohen's like as intolerable cruelty, but we're not going to get quite even to a burn after reading level probably, which yeah. I also think is an underrated movie. It's pretty funny. Well, yeah, but burn after reading. See, the difference here is is burn after reading has an energy to it. Exactly. There's a there's there's life in that yeah. movie that is slightly different. It feels like a movie that they made and shot in a weekend. Yeah. Uh, which is something that they started out their their uh, careers as, as kids with a super eight camera doing for sure. Um, and it felt like uh it felt like a little love letter to to, to having done that absolutely um this movie felt like that but without any of the energy it felt like an obligation and it felt like nobody was trying at all yeah uh that being said if i didn't know this if this i never didn't, didn't know it was a cold yeah i would have been like i don't know if this movie hit what it wanted to hit but it certainly entertained the fuck out of me a lot of times and i'd be if these are if this was somebody's first movie i'd be like I really want to know where you're going to go. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So it's the Coen Brothers, and there's a history of the best movies that have ever made by people. Yeah. Uh, so it's really hard to kind of judge it other than that. But but just being out at the movies and something that was a, kind of a spectacle to look at from moment to moment um, had enough ups for me that I enjoyed myself out in the theater watching it. Yeah. Um, will I watch it again? Probably not. I I. Mm, I don't know if I uh, if it's on Netflix. I wouldn't. I don't know if I'd put it on a Netflix and just scan through. But yeah, I just got cable again. So <laughs> if it turns up on cable, yeah, on like you know a Superstation or some shit like that, I might watch a segment or two and be like, <laughs> yeah, you know what, that's great. Yeah, I want to see this Channing Tatum dance number again. If it if it turns up on cable, uh, uh, you know, just shows up in front of me at some point. I will turn it off and watch Lewin Davis. That's a crazy <laughs> thing. Uh, th- this, other than Lady Killers, is probably my least favorite Coen Brothers yeah, movie Yeah, it's today, definitely on the low end which there. Which I, I don't count. For some reason, I, I I feel okay to not count movies like Lady Killers and Intolerable Cruelty. Right. Intolerable Cruelty, obviously, because it's not. It, it was a Brian Grazer movie. Right. That he was like, hey, can you guys yeah, do I this? I do not count it at all. No, no <laughs> I don't think anybody does. No. Um, and Lady Killers is just like, we all just pretend it didn't happen. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think everybody's just fine to kind of go yeah uh, you know tom hanks included <laughs> everyone's just yeah. trying to go like man uh, and all that leading up to that i was like oh tom hanks and tom a hanks in a Coen Brothers yeah, movie yeah. Did perfect but but that movie f- perfectly exemplified why that's not a good idea yeah uh but uh but, but all that aside this movie i do count as a Coen brothers movie yeah because there's really very coen's in um in but, parts but i think it's definitely my least favorite yeah. whereas their last movie might be my favorite, sure. Of theirs, yeah, picking a favorite of them is not. Yeah, a, it's it's a dumb yeah. thing to do. Don't do it. But uh, but 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 it is it's a movie that still sticks with me today. Yeah, you know who knows? They're they're not uh, they're not losing a step. No. Yeah, but I would they, love I the would amount love of a, a rich like creative, thoughtful comedy out of them. Again. Well, it doesn't even have to be for, thoughtful. I, 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 no, I just wanted some energy. Yeah, yeah. The amount of their of, their sense of humor is very particular. And rare, and I would like to see a uh, another film that really shows it off well. I feel like they've made enough, like really great movies that they still have like five more duds in them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Before they, we get they to would like, have hey, to make guys. like fifteen uh, <laughs> in a row of the worst movies ever made for their record to truly be tarnished. <laughs> At this point, you know, yeah, and they'll never, they'll never mar movies like A Serious Man or, uh, you know, Fargo or Miller's Crossing for me. Those movies no. will always be perfect. They'll always be fucking perfect. Mm-hmm. Barton Fink, you know. 
Yeah. And they like making movies about making movies. And this, yeah. you know, when you got Barton Fink already in your. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When you've already done Barton Fink, why do Hail Caesar? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and I get exactly what it was supposed to be. Yeah, it's a and... different beast entirely. Yeah. From that. But, man. Um, well, speaking of some of the worst movies ever made, <laughs> uh, this week I watched a movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I, oh boy, okay. I went to the theaters to see The Choice. Uh, this is a brand new movie just landed in theaters. Right now it's getting 28 on Metascore. Um, this is a this is the 11th adaptation of a Nicholas Sparks film. How, <laughs> how um, many books does he have? Uh, about a million, I feel like. Uh, well, no, sorry. He has one book that yeah, he has yeah, photocopied, yeah. <laughs> that he has photocopied times. many yeah. times. Only one with a ghost, though. Yeah. Uh, this movie, according to... That you know of. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. The, the Maybe IMD, there's many. IMD, all, all of the other ones have ghosts. Yeah. Maybe in the other ones, the ghost was such a subtle subtext. Yeah. You, <laughs> you didn't even get it. IMDb describes the synopsis of this film as Travis and Gabby first meet as neighbors in a small coastal town and wind up in a relationship that is tested by life's most defining events. Um, what? What? I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, could you read that again? I fell asleep halfway through. Travis and Gabby meet as neighbors in a small coastal town and wind up in a relationship that is tested by life's most defining events. Uh, 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 wait, so, uh, what was the Miley Cyrus one that I watched? Uh, I don't know. That sounds like what we're, what we're talking yeah. about. So Travis and Gabby, played by Benjamin Walker and Teresa Palmer. I Benjamin, don't know who those either of them are. Benjamin Walker... <laughs> uh, most recently was in the in the heart of the sea, the Ron Howard movie. He was also in Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. Uh-huh. Uh, and Ooh, uh, I believe he was Abraham Lincoln, I, or, or, right. or or at least he was in it. I don't know. But Teresa Palmer, <laughs> uh, she was in Warm Bodies. <laughs> she was in I Am Number Four, The Sorcerer's Apprentice, a bunch of uh, uh, kind of teen garbage. Teen yeah, okay. garbage. Great. Um, and who else is in this movie? I'm trying to think. If there's Tom Wilkinson. Tom Wilkinson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yep. And so okay. Uh, Holy shit. <laughs> okay, this movie's fucking garbage, obviously. <laughs> How many um, Nicholas Sparks movies have so you seen? So many, I feel like. The <laughs> Lucky One with Zac Efron. Um, I don't even remember that. I'm, I believe The Longest Ride was was him as well. With, That's the one yeah. with Clint Eastwood Jr.? S- yeah, right. riding horses and shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you saw Safe Haven. Safe yeah. Haven. Yeah, well, you I saw s- that, too. Yeah. How, what, did I've, you uh, saw one, Casey, right? Yeah. Just, uh, I've seen two. You've seen yeah. two? I saw... Um, oh, you saw the... Uh, Miley the, Cyrus. What's the turkey one, one or whatever? Chicken one? That and was LOL. That wasn't Miley Cyrus. No, that wasn't... That wasn't Nicholas no, Sparks. No. Oh. no, Nicholas... No, the other one I saw was... Uh, oh, right. I think it was you called The Best it. of Me. Yeah, The right, Best okay. of Me. Yeah. I've never seen one. Well, I mean, I've seen The Notebook. Yeah. Uh, Which is like his, volition? like uh, it's like his movie that is the only one that I feel like anyone has ever said was. I feel like that's the only one I've ever heard anyone defend. Yeah, the Notebook. Yeah, yeah, sure, and I get it. Yeah, it, and 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 it's and I I think it's defendable, but only in its star power. It's a movie that yeah. landed because of the stars. Yes, <clears throat> I didn't see it. Yeah, uh, like it, it is. No, it's, it's, I'm, I would never be like, oh, oh, you haven't seen it. You should see that. No, <laughs> never. But, but I, uh, but having seen many of his movies, I, I would be like, if I've you, seen if worse, you need to crappy watch, romantic if you movies, want, if you want to force yourself to watch one, yeah, that's the only that's one that's like directed one. with any kind of intent yeah. and acted yeah. with any kind yeah. of intent. Even though yeah, it's a good yeah, cast, it's still super manipulative in the way that he what is. We got you sure. James Garner. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah, who's the old lady? I don't know. James Garner's the yeah, old lady. James Continue. Garner plays everyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. So yeah. I do want to say Benjamin Walker as Travis in this movie. Yeah. He's the love interest. Uh-huh. You could... Fall in love. You could fall in <laughs> love with this man. <laughs> and boy, by golly, I did. Yeah. <laughs> you could so easily switch yeah. out a couple music stings and this would be a horror movie. This, oh, because he's like creepy. <laughs> this guy <laughs> in this movie is such a creepy bully, and I'll get to that. But yeah. like his performance is just like he's like a good old southern boy. But he's so like he's a good old southern boy. He was a ladies' man, but he's like forceful and so like and like I'm the whole movie. I'm thinking like you're obsessed and a couple like horror mu- movie strings in this in this, and it's like a horror film. Like you could. You would not have to change some of these scenes yeah. very much to edit a ho- this movie as a horror movie. Um, so the gist of the movie is Travis uh, Benjamin Walker. He's like a 
good old boy um, in this the, in the town of Beaufort. And Gabby, she's like the uptight neighbor who moves next door, and she doesn't like that he's got all his friends outside and they're partying and having a dinner and like drinking drinks and cranking the tunes. And she's like, I gotta study. Ah, uh-huh. stop cranking Black Betty over there. Black Betty. <laughs> what year is this movie set in? Now. <laughs> or like seven years ago or something uh-huh. um, oh, yeah. at the beginning of it. And so she's moved, just moved to town. She's studying. She's a medical student. She's got like rich parents and he's uh, he works at like a vet's office with his pa. Wait, this movie is set seven years ago? It, it's a movie that opens where he's like, <laughs> Have oh. You, you, nev- you really haven't seen no, uh, you really uh, haven't. Nicholas Barr's <laughs> movie. It's a movie. They all start seven years yeah, ago. It's a movie. <laughs> or 27 oh. years ago or 17 yeah. years ago. All right, all right. It's a movie that opens with him like narrating these like, oh, I got to make a real hard choice right now. <laughs> but I'll tell you that later, seven years ago when I met this woman kind of thing. Yeah. And then they start the story there. Right away. Here, yeah. enjoy Black Betty for seven yeah. years. So I'm a lamb. <laughs> you remember seven years ago when we were all listening to Black Betty. Yeah. So he So um, fresh. Yeah. <laughs> ah, Ram a lamb indeed. <laughs> <laughs> so um he is this like good old boy. He's got a boat and he lives like on the uh on the water and, and he's got all these friends that come over all the time. His dad um uh is played by Tom Wilkinson and his mother is uh someone who had passed away years ago. And he's also got uh <laughs> The character or the actress? <laughs> His mom in the movie. Yeah. There's no actress. Okay. It's oh, okay. just a character. Oh, right. <laughs> um, and uh, this guy, Travis, he's like got this on again, off again kind of like girlfriend that all his friends call Boomerang because she keeps leaving and coming back. Oh. Clever. Yeah. Is so she, Is she Australian? I don't know. <laughs> So the gist of the movie is uh, he lives there with his like friends and he's kind of like, yeah, doesn't commit, has an on and on on and off again girlfriend whatever and she moves next door and man they hate each other but i have a feeling that they're probably gonna fall in love so eventually she comes out and's like you turn down your music ah black betty i hate that song you turn down your music or so help me god i'll fall in love yeah. with you <laughs> and she's also like your dog impregnated my dog <laughs> you, got, you got your chocolate in my penis <laughs> yeah <laughs> things just got sexy <laughs> yeah and he keeps saying like lady you bother me uh-huh. <laughs> i do dec- i say he's I like do lady dec- <laughs> and then and they eventually twist that into like a like a romantic thing. Oh, like, lady, you boner. Does that turn into like a ditto for them kind of thing? Sort of. Not really. Yeah. He just keeps saying like, I'll tell you later. <laughs> when the inevitable sparks you uh, trauma penis. happens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he's kind of... Um, you penis me. <laughs> so yeah, he's kind of got a girlfriend <laughs> and uh, she is sort of... She's dating this um, this this doctor who works in the same um, medical uh, profession as her, the, somewhere in the hospital. They don't, I don't really remember any of this garbage. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, he goes away for like two weeks, and so they end up spending time together and falling in love. And oh. they finally, like, she's... It, she seems not interested very often. And this is the first when they finally start like kissing, and and eventually when they finally have when sex, they finally start kissing. Well, it, 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 honestly, all that. that stuff that I just, all <laughs> that stuff that I just described was like an hour of the fucking movie. Right. This is a two-hour movie. Start kissing, you were like, like. get to the romance. <laughs> it's garbage. Uh, Your dogs are already <laughs> fucking. Yeah. Um, when they finally, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Well, I wish I'd yelled that out. When they finally get to like the romance, she I feel like she's still really like, No, I have a boyfriend. This shouldn't happen and he's just like, I'm gonna make out with you anyway, you bother me. And like it's kinda creepy. And the scene there's two scenes in this movie. One where um where they first kiss and then eventually have sex, and then another later when, spoiler alert, they get married, where he's like kinda bullying her. And like she's like no Say I do. Do it. Uh, Do it. That is not <laughs> far from the truth. <laughs> wow. Um, but but they like have this sex and it's like it seems like it's so forceful on his end and I was like this is not cool. This is gross. And the whole movie is like that. I'm just I don't understand this. Like, it's not like oh she can't resist his charms. I'm like she's trying to. She's saying no. I don't <laughs> like you a lot. 
Um, but they do also have a lot of stuff where they're whatever falling in love. And then because this is a Nicholas Sparks movie, this this is a movie that spins its wheels doing its dumb shit with the romance for like an hour and a half. Yeah. And then gives these characters their their happy ending. So uh, the the doctor comes back to town after they've fallen in love and banged and, and she doesn't know what to do because she doesn't know if she should pick the guy that she's already been with or this new hot flame that could just be like a, a side thing. And, and he gets real mad about it and runs away and they have their whole like argument. And so she runs home uh, to her parents' place and then he shows up and this is where Casey, what you were just saying, he's like, I'm here to, like I'm laying it on the line. I want you to marry me. And he like gets down on one knee, and his, her parents are like, "Go for it, man! Here's a ring." And they're like <laughs> really like pushing him and and pushing their daughter, who see, is saying, "No, don't do this," into this situation. Yes, sir. Yeah, <laughs> we've Not, always wanted you to marry a there, scumbag. <laughs> there is so much like people in this movie forcing relationships on other people. There's a whole thing with uh, the main character's dad who like is a vet and this woman keeps coming in with her cat and they're like, she's just coming in because she has a crush on you. You better ask her out. The and cat? You're like, no, like the woman <laughs> with the cat. <laughs> and then I'm like, maybe they don't like to f- chill. <laughs> but anyway, so he comes and shows up and is like, gets down on one knee with the ring that the parents gave, uh, gave him. And he's like, will you marry me? And she goes, no. And then he's like, yes. And she's like, no. And he's like, yes. And she's like, yes. Like, it goes back wow. and forth with him just yelling no at her. And I was like, or him him yelling yes at her and her being like, no, I don't want to marry you. And I was like, he's bullying her into a marriage. And they cut from there to like a happy marriage. Woo. You saw this in theaters? Yes. Yeah. Did you go by yourself? Yes. Oh, man. Uh-huh. Uh, how many people were in the theater And then, uh, how many people? Yeah. Not a ton, but there was a, a, a couple, hint, yeah. Uh, yeah, there was a yeah. sprinkling of Fair people there. Enjoying Anyone? themselves? Yeah. Where well, they were like, yes, They dude. were. Somebody yes, uh, on yes. the way out, somebody was like, my mascara is running because I've been crying. And I was like, there's nothing. You're an idiot. Yeah. So <laughs> so this movie gives these characters a happy ending. They Now we fast forward. They've got kids. They've been married for a few years. And then out of nowhere, because it's a Nicholas Sparks movie, she gets hit by a car when she's driving around and goes yes. into a coma. Yeah. And it's about time. <laughs> and it becomes that the titular choice is whether he needs to pull the plug on her oh, or not. Oh, wonderful. Well, please tell me he does. And he doesn't. And here's I the kicker. I live. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. No. He doesn't because uh, there is a Christian uh, layer in this movie where yeah. uh, she likes going to church and he won't go to church, but his dad is like a pastor. And so eventually they get caught in the rain. And the only thing nearby is a church. And it happens to be the church that his dad's a pastor at. And they go there. And then he's like, oh, you got my son to go to a church. You're a keeper. Uh, and then anyway, he's like, at the end of the movie, he just can't he can't pull the plug on her. So he, he, he says he was one day, he's like, this is the day I'm going to do it. And he can't. And then like the next day she wakes up. And he's like, glad I didn't do oh, that. Good thing I didn't. Good thing I didn't. Kill and you. I read the, the wicked. Fun, <laughs> funny story. I was yeah. this I was close going to yesterday. Mm. And the, and I read the. I sold all your shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I pronounced you legally. <laughs> yeah. Um. And and I read the the synopsis of the book on Wikipedia, and the book seems to be like between her going into the coma and like like it time passes in the movie and the kids start to get older, but in the in the movie it's like in the book it says like oh he decides to put her in like intensive care and like yeah. years go by before she comes back and in the movie it yeah. seems like once he decides not to she just miraculously comes to yeah. and then they uh, spend the rest of their lives together and it's really stupid isn't that nice yeah it, it's it's fucking disgusting and I feel like there is a weird <laughs> like there there really is a weird undercurrent of her like I, I get that it's supposed to be like oh I feel the passion but I don't want to and I'm, I got this back and forth but it just yeah, yeah. it came off so like I'm saying no to you marrying me and you're just yelling yes at me like he's so gross and the bother me thing keeps coming back where when she's in the coma he's like come bother me come back and bother <laughs> it me it bothers me how dead you yeah. are <laughs> yeah it's just gross and manipulative as always. Yeah, and yeah, I feel I like the, the last chunk of the movie just becomes like offensive. Yeah. Like it's just awful and it's not sad at all. And it, and just having rewatched something like me or me and her on the dying girl where I was like super sad. Yeah. I was like, there's nothing to this movie. Yeah. Like not you, nothing happened. 
and then you just murdered like half murdered one of your characters and assumed that that's enough for somebody to be like sad now I don't because know. this character that you didn't set up properly got hit in a car accident and it's just like there's n- it's not the fucking movie 19 minutes in heaven or whatever the fuck that was that I watched mm-hmm. had more like I don't know I I get a different uh, undercurrent from you I think you loved this movie yeah yes yes yes, <laughs> yes. you fell in love with that he you love this movie her into a marriage it's fucking crazy. marry this movie yeah <laughs> guess it okay yeah it's <laughs> fucked <laughs> this movie got your dog pregnant yeah <laughs> it's insane and yeah and and the forcefulness of everybody in this movie that aren't the main characters getting other people into relationships the whole movie I was just like fucking mind your own business. But you can feel the ways that it's that his movies are manipulative. Like it, it creates this little feeling of community amongst yeah. family and friends and stuff like that. That uh, I'm not going to pinpoint, you know, the middle states of America specifically, yeah. because there's parts of Canada that that are very much like. Mm-hmm. But like this real down home kind of, yeah, uh, uh, like church going people. They they eat shit like that up. There doesn't have to be character yeah. development, and the less character development, the better, because they get to identify with these people yeah. because they go to church and they have friends who yeah. have barbecues and stuff like that. So it just pisses me off because like. <laughs> The this less movie, character development, the better, because they can insert themselves directly yeah, into yeah. it. But these movies are selling, you know, it's the argument, like, this doesn't exist. Like, the the kind of relationship in this movie that is so, like, burns bright for all of eternity, and, like, and the friendships that are so perfect, we're all listening to music on our, on our patio, and, like, everything is just perfect, and we're on our fucking boat driving around, like, nobody has that like it's one of no, the I just, it, movie, it upsets me that this movie is even to the people that like it and it's fine that those people like it but it's like selling this like hollow offensive lie but that's why this to movie people exists. that don't need to be sold a lie <laughs> but they've been sold this lie their whole lives yeah and so they've been searching for this type of thing their whole lives so when they see it on screen they go, yes, that's what I taught. That, yeah. That's what I've been looking for. Yeah. And so they're constantly chasing the dragon. Yeah. <laughs> that sparks. It, it is, I'm not saying it's not mani- manipulative and gross. No, it, I know. It, that's why it is. Totally. It's this insidious, um, like, idealism that yeah. uh, that ruins real relationships for people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's but just that's why, garbage. But that's why people fucking put their money down to yeah. see it. Yep. And the people Plus, that... this movie probably cost... Not yeah, a lot, you know, yeah, like a couple million. million dollars to make. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the people that liked it in the theater, like you said when you saw your Nichols Sparks movie, like they walked away with what they wanted. So yeah, yeah. fine. But yeah, it would piss me off. It was so bad, so bad. Dumb as fuck. Wonderful. <clears throat> um, all right. Well, last week Casey, you gave us an album by Casey Veggies. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, why my reason was tell us why his name is my name. Yeah, <laughs> and it had something to do with the movie, right? Uh, Dope. Oh yeah, yeah. They comes, uh, yeah. That's that where was I just first a happy coincidence, I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, what was the name of this album again? Uh, Live, Live and grow. grow. Live and Grow. Yes. Yeah. Um, which I guess is my review of this album, <laughs> because I listened to this album a bunch, and I feel like my takeaway from Live and Grow by Casey Veggies was like, this is fine. It's rap that is borderline mainstream but not mainstream i just kind of felt like the whole time i was listening to this like i don't hate this but i'm not like i don't know i wasn't into it yeah what did you uh, think? i also will use the title as some sort of uh example of how i felt about this album uh i have been kind of dabbling into a bit of the odd future crew here and there yeah he's an odd future guy he is odd future and i find odd future ultimately disappointing I, I hated them when they first came out yeah like I, I you so know much. Tyler the creator uh, there was so much hype around it and stuff like that and you know I got Goblin and a couple of the yeah. records I'm like I don't get it man like I when I hear when I listen to On Future MCs and albums I'm like wow these are some really talented rappers who don't have any songs or any beats yeah uh, the beats are the worst thing c- consistently with Odd Future the beats are really super boring even somebody like Earl Sweatshirt mm-hmm. who I think is the most talented guy in the bunch also his name is Earl, Earl Sweatshirt, Sweatshirt which is so so good <laughs> when you give him a solid beat behind him like a really good fucking beat you get a great really like kind of a memorable song come out but too in, uh, so so frequently with everything on futures the beat is just they're trying to do their own thing and with a minimalistic sort of vibe going on yeah. and just but it just makes for mm, songs that i don't really 
Yeah, I felt they don't make an impact. I mean, I don't even. I'm not aware from one ending to the next beginning too much. Yeah. The whole thing seems more like a fashion aesthetic, and not, I'm not even talking about like visually. It like the the sound seems like, oh, it's it's like it, this must be hip because it's mm-hmm. like it is very minimalist and yeah. I, they they they're affecting weird little voices and everything but it does not make for actual song yeah. I just yeah. felt like the 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 early odd future stuff it was like yeah like with what's Greg saying like here's a bunch of you know really young rappers with a lot of talent a lot of potential <clears throat> a lot of potential throwing throwing like garbage around like yeah. the, the, especially their early stuff I was like you're just being sh- shits you know, with your slurs, and you don't understand the seriousness of being like offensive, and you think that like you're you're doing something artistic by offensive being how? like like they like a lot of their early odd future stuff would be like homophobic Very, and yeah. and just like we're gonna throw around all these you know the worst swear words that you can because like we want to be the South Park of rap, but without yeah. any of the actual like thinking about what I'm saying. You know what yeah. I mean? And and I was just that offended me so much. And 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 I do think that this album is a little more removed from here because it is a little bit more it is. attempting. So "Live and Grow" is the title of it, and I did uh, live, live a bit <laughs> with this album, <laughs> and it did grow on. Yeah. Me. So by the end of the week, I was like, "This is actually all right," because this is the first. I think this is the the album from the Odd Future Crew that has the best beats. Mm-hmm. And there are moments yeah, where I was good. really it was like not well, all of it, not all of it. called veggies for nothing. No, no, because right? he uh, beats. Yes, beats. Uh, it's uh, yeah. You you call them yeah, call them Dwight Schrute. They're, they're very good for you. Um, <laughs> it's uh, not every song. It didn't land for me every yeah. everywhere with this album. I don't think. Yeah, I think this is the best album to come out of Odd Future. I, yeah, I, I don't know that. that he's the best rapper. No, but he's definitely got the best songs. I just yeah, because this thing I could differentiate enough of it from yeah. the others where it wasn't just the simplest, smallest beat. Yeah, and he's and he does get a little. Uh, he's he's able to get away from the. Uh, remember that little po- thing popped up a little while ago where Snoop Dogg was talking about how all the MCs yes, sound the same. Yeah. Everybody does the hibbida 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 da. Yeah. And he does get away from that, and Odd Future is really guilty of yeah. falling into that sort of category with hip hop. So there's a little bit more uh, to enjoy from beats here, and yeah. you, and you get a couple of standout choruses. And he is a good rapper; he, he's mm-hmm. solid. And I guess I gotta kind of enjoy an album that starts off with endorsement from his dad. Yeah, which is like weird it's as shit, so weird. man. <laughs> I just yeah, for me, um, the like, but I don't know if that's the most like. <laughs> you know, curveball hip hop thing to do to have your dad be like, "Hey, man, this record's great." Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, because uh, Jurassic Five did that on. Uh, well, okay, th- that's different. that's different. When this he's is talking about like his that. son going through his records and all yeah. this and all day music and that, the whole thing is so fucking that's cool. That's so good. This is just like, hello, I'm the dad yeah. of this. I was rapper. like, I was like, don't you rap? You got to do this instead. Then I heard this record and I was like, fuck yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which, it's pretty right, funny. That's, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. It's all right. I'll, it is what it is, you know. I, um, so this album is I, like a couple of things we talked about today, or at least my opinions on them. Good, not great. Yeah. Uh, will I go back to this? Probably not. If I'm going to listen to modern hip hop right now, I'll 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 probably stick to you know. Uh, uh, it's a pimp a butterfly or yeah. whatever, you know. But even that, like, is so good. You're gonna do a what? I'm gonna pimp a butterfly. Yeah, oh, good yeah. luck. No, like uh, Kendrick Lamar, and it's as good album. as, and yeah, he's fantastic. But even that, like, when I'm listening to Pimp a Butterfly, I'm like, this is just the second half of Stankonia. I'm not crazy, <laughs> right? Like, we're just doing <laughs> yeah. that again. Yeah, uh, but that goes. You know, when you have a revolutionary album, uh, I guess yeah. people just keep on doing it over and over again. Yeah, they're, they're not doing it anymore. No, they certainly yeah. aren't. I, um, case, but yeah, hey, listen, that's a great record. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, Butterfly no, so is good. a marvel of production and ambition. Um, yeah, but yeah, that's where I'd rather be there. That totally, kind of creativity absolutely. feels a little bit more. And that was kind of why I kind of I feel like this is a little bit forgettable at moments for me because I I just felt like it it, it was an album that's. And I and I feel like maybe this comes from the odd future thing is that it's the titles live and grow and it's like the dads introducing and it's yeah, like yeah. being kind of presented as this sort of mature rap album. But then when you listen to it, you're like, eh, there's still yeah, a lot no, of I, just like uh, bitches. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of it. Yeah, there's a lot of it. And it's like, and it doesn't reach it, the I growth part. Like it never gets yeah. somewhere. Like I, I'm not somewhere new. 
at the end of this yeah. album than where we are right now. It's off the somebody top. who's not there yet being like, I've I'm arrived. Yeah, totally. Like, I'm That's, mature. I, yeah, I know I've had all these travels, but then isn't actually. Yeah. But, but you're right. Like, there was stuff about it that I thought. I don't dislike this, but no, yeah, no, I just found I, it very forgettable. But I won't be back to it. Yeah. I could see him coming Maybe, yeah, to I, a couple I will, albums. I will and, check out something yeah, again in the future. Definitely. I think there's enough there for that. But yeah. this album is but, the Yeah, I won't return to this. But it's good. It's it's not I mean it's if you if you like Odd Future, this is probably Yeah. Prob- probably right up your alley. Definitely. Yeah. So I think we've come to an agreement here. I am still the best, Casey. Yeah. <laughs> You're pretty good. Yeah. I'm a pretty, pretty good pretty good boy. boy. <laughs> <laughs> speaking of maturing. Yes. Speaking of growing up. Yes. <laughs> the trials. You have a real asshole look on your face. <laughs> <laughs> the trials and tribulations of life and what, what can life bring you and yeah. what can you give back to it and and the miracle of life. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> um. I'm going to give you guys an album. You're both uh, fathers. Yeah. Right? True. Um, yes. Greg, most recently. Yeah, take that. And I'm going to give you guys. <laughs> Not a contest, <laughs> Dan. Uh, it was old Greg, hat most over recently, here. so you yeah. better pop another one out. He's old and worn <laughs> yeah. out. Yeah. Boring. <laughs> Yesterday's. Boring. Baby. Pop another one out. Um, I'm going to give you guys an album by a father uh-huh. uh, whose name is Nick Lachey. Uh oh, that's a weird correlation. <laughs> and he he put out an album for Fisher Price recently, uh, a year or two ago, called oh. "A Father's Lullaby" of oh. lullabies for babies. Oh, this mm. sounds arduous. <laughs> so, <laughs> check out Nick Lachey's "A Father's Lullaby" on mm. some Fisher Price album mm. imprint. Mm. Okay. Um, I listened to one song from it, and it sounded like. Um, I will judge boring the, music. Yeah, great. I will judge this album solely on whether or not it puts my daughter. And to this sleep. was what I was thinking because I thought this will be really funny to give you guys. Yeah. But I was also like that when Greg when we when we talked about Enya and you were just like you know I just vibed out to it and it was nice yeah, to be yeah. there. And I'm thinking if this could g- actually go over well, like if you we'll guys see. start playing will, this around I the will house put this and it on works, for my daughter maybe. and uh, forever fracture my relationship with her. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not going to put this on for my daughter because I don't want her to fall in love with it <laughs> and have to listen to Nick Lachey for the rest of my life. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I think my, my daughter's still young enough that she doesn't like anything or dislike it. Yeah. <laughs> it's all the same big mess of blurs yeah. and moving shapes. Yeah. Oh, B is very discerning now. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's a real bitch about things she doesn't uh, I really want to hear her opinion on Tangerine. That's by the way. <laughs> yeah, she found it facile. Yeah, that's one of the best things. By the way, for anybody who's a parent, this is my best parenting tip. Uh, if you're a parent and you come home and your baby's crying, the funniest thing you can do is say to your wife, "What's this bitch crying about?" <laughs> 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 because calling your baby this bitch is pretty hilarious. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm a great father. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <clears throat> all right. Well, Nick Lachey's a father's lullaby. Yeah. I all hope. Right. Uh, I, d- I checked to make sure that it was on Spotify. It should be on the streaming services. Yep. I'll yeah. find it. Uh, well, it's time to roll. Yep. <clears throat> this week, Deadpool comes out. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we're going to have to roll for that. It's a big release. We're yeah. going to see whether or not this, uh, you know, marketing juggernaut, they've been really pushing this shit down our throats. Uh, yeah. I saw that emoji uh, billboard the other day. And right, I was with like, the skull and the skull, yeah, dead, poo and dead the L. poo. Oh god, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I was kind of like, oh, I don't know, man. Yeah. It, uh, like the marketing is further pushing me away from this movie. Sure. I feel like I'm at the point now where I'm just kind of like not interested, but I will watch. Yeah, I, 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 I need to a, know if it's yeah. successful. If it's exactly. if it's gonna, you know, have a bite to make yeah. the bark, right? Um. So. Speaking of heroes, yes, Greg, you found a movie. I did to watch. I did find a <laughs> movie with arguably the best title the big, of all yeah. time. Yes, <laughs> which is Food Boy. Food Boy, <laughs> right? It's a superhero is movie. Is he a boy? Is he food? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you find, you find out. Um, <clears throat> and I and uh, the uh, the little synopsis that pops up on Netflix for it too is like a boy discovers his newly found power of uh, turning, uh, being able to. <laughs> uh, uh, create food out of thin air 
uh, he is then presented with a choice of either giving up his power or using it for good. I'm yeah, like, that's those aren't the only choices. It <laughs> or cannot be using it sometimes. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Or uh, fucking uh, take care of lunch, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah one, one, pick up lunch, food boy. One yeah. choice is to have a sandwich every once in a while, whatever you yeah. want. Yeah, you yeah not bad about, at all. Yeah. But and it's a full Sack length lunch. movie. There's this is a ninety minute story. So we'll see. Do we? Yeah, we've been, I've been we've been sitting on this one for a while. Discovered it last year, waiting for a superhero movie to come out. Yeah. To have this be the loser. We have to. Food Boy. Okay. Casey? What? Roll for Food Boy versus Dead Poo L. Yeah. We do. Uh, there's a, if you want a bigger surface, there's some records over there you can All use right. To, let's do it. Two VHS tapes ain't going to do it, I don't think. Casey's a wild roller. I am. I will go all everywhere. Over the place. With this I'm shit. a wild roller. Yeah. Rolling. Casey's got an eight. Oh. All right. And I'm rolling. That's a three. <laughs> Fucking shit. Ah, yeah. Good stuff. <laughs> yeah. No. No. Lower than a three. Lower than a three. Oh. That's off the chippy stuff. Yeah, it's give me back. It's okay. off. Okay. Roll lower than a three. Nine. Nine. It's a nine. It's bad. Three times. A three. Oh. <laughs> You're the food boy. <laughs> Well, I get to watch this at home. Yeah, yeah. food boy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you fall in love? I'm gonna eat. So Don't you fall in love with that food boy? I'm gonna eat so much food while I'm watching Food Boy. <laughs> I'm gonna like live tweet it. I'm got yeah, sandwiches all over the place. <clears throat> <laughs> food boy. All right, couldn't be better. I'm a food boy. Food boy. All right. Oh, next week, Food Boy. Um, <laughs> Dead yeah. Poo L and uh-huh. Nick Lachey is a father's lullaby. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Great. Oh. And Great. I get to think of another album, which is good because I actually had another option <laughs> this week that I was like, this is it forever until I found out about the. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah. yeah. Next week is going to be a fun one. And I don't want you guys to think I've forgotten about getting the bonus punishment. Yes. Of yeah. Being the I biggest was hoping you had. Loser of uh 2015 I saw the uh, the most loser movies that year. Yeah. And I have figured out what I'm going to do. Um, I am I'm not going to dump it out on you now. Um I might wait until we do our next streaming episode. Okay. Uh but I've got it figured out. I'm scared. It's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is it a lot of what what's the uh, It sounds like it's going to be very involved. Yeah, what's the t- what's the time input on this for uh, for us, um, like, are we looking uh, at something we got to spend the week with, or is it like a three hour thing? You, it could be both. <laughs> a th- <laughs> well, this is very kind of depends. On, it's it's going to depend on what you do with it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm excited about it. We'll it's going to be what happens. All right. pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> are you going to give? Two discs of the Flaming Lips Zerika to me and two discs to Casey. We'll have to try and put it together with our <laughs> descriptions. Oh, that sounds, yeah. that yeah. sounds like the worst. Yeah. <clears throat> we did decide the punishment, uh, the extra punishment you get to dole out can be anything. anything. It can be anything. Yeah. Any form of uh, whatever the fuck. So. It could be you kicking us in the nuts for Are you going to give yeah. us like some discounted meat and you're going to be like, yeah. cook it into whatever meals you wish. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to slop it on a slice of pizza yeah. and make uh, enjoy this yeah. spoiled delicacy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, well, if you'd like to email us about anything in this episode, please email us at info at modernsuperior.com. Uh, go to modernsuperior.com. Listen to Flight School. Listen to Super Zero and more. Mm-hmm. Coming soon, uh, Matt Brown uh, is working on his new podcast about my so-called life called My So-Cast Life, mm-hmm. where him and Katarina G from... Uh, the royal uh, programmer, they will be watching the TV show and then digging into their personal library of um, of journals Journal for entries. their entries from that week. Wow. <laughs> it's uh, it's pretty epic. Yeah. Uh, that's going to come it's eventually. And yeah, Flight School, Let's Scare Matthew, Price of Death. There's a lot there for you to listen to. Yeah. Comment on all those threads. Yeah. And uh, follow us at SYNWPC at all of our places. And by all of our places, I mean Twitter and Facebook. Yeah. yeah. And uh, if you're listening to us on the internet and you want a good place to check us out, go to acast.com, yeah. A-C-A-S-T dot com. You can find us there. Backslash or forward slash, whichever one is more computer good. Uh, <laughs> see you next Wednesday. Yeah. So do that um, and check us out.
Yeah. And until next week. Oh, and also check out our uh, the Modern Superior YouTube channel, yes. which is yeah. filling up with We're content. We're going to put some content there. Yeah. Yeah, you can see this episode. You can see this episode. Right sure. there. If you're listening to this episode with audio only and you're like... Uh, I want to see Casey spill a beer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah what, is, <laughs> what does Casey's damp lap look like? <laughs> uh, you, can, you can see it all. Yeah. yeah. And you wore light-colored pants, which shows the uh, You stains can see off right well. through. I yeah. actually, you can see everything. Yeah, there's nothing to see there. It's... <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm excited for your subway true. ride home. I, I had it yeah. all removed. Where you just smell of beer the whole way home. <laughs> I, was, I was just thinking, it's a good thing I'm not driving home. <laughs> yeah. Officer, I swear. <laughs> I was on a podcast recording and I spilled my single beer I drank. <laughs> more of it, yeah. more okay. of it's on my legs than in my mouth. Podcast. All right, you're coming with me. <laughs> uh, very all good. Right. Uh, well, there we are. Yeah, well, until next week, uh, goodbye, Internet. The extra F in Dorf stands for fuck Gene. Fuck. Bye. <laughs> Bye. This has been a presentation of the Modern Superior Media Network.